and free. Bon après midi. Tout le monde. Je me perds Guillaume et c'est le fucking jeudi podcast après vendredi. Something about lundi. What's going on, you motherfuckers? Um, oh man, I'm have, you, have, you ever have one of those days where it's like, is the universe trying to tell me to go back to bed? Because I will. I will. Um, my wife, she had a rough day yesterday, right? And I figured out, I figured out broads. All right. I've learned how to respect these bitches. <laughs> No, I've actually figured out, you know, how to be in a relationship. I just get it now. It's like you're with somebody that agreed to spend their life with you. And if you're walking around being a grumpy cunt, not only are you wasting your life, you're wasting their life, too. So I check in on her, right? Check it in on you. And um, she had a bad night's sleep, and my, my son kept coming in and everything. So I just said, hey, you know, why don't you go sleep in my office tonight? I'll get the kids ready. Yada, 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 right? And one of my, and she's like, do you do that for me? I said, absolutely. She gave me a sweet kiss right on the cheek, told me she loved me, you know? And she woke up the next day just glowing, right as rain, great mood, been humming songs around the house, fantastic, right? Me, on the other hand, uh, I sat there and watched fucking Instagram videos. I watched a guy on YouTube teach me how to play uh, What Do You Do For Money, Honey, ACDC. And I was just watching it going, I'll remember how to do this. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I ended up stopping on. But by then it was like, I swear to God, like 2.30 in the morning. I was like, why did I just fucking do that? So of course, my son shows up at like 4 in the morning. I think maybe I got to bed at 1.30. And uh, I just been fucking, I don't know. Went downstairs, I made him waffles, we got the whole thing. You know, my wife's like singing a song and I'm just sitting there like fucking bleary eyed, right? And uh so I go to one of my favorite coffee joints after I drop the kids off at school and I get my wife what she likes. You know, her decaf latte. And I just go in there and I go, Let me uh let me get a cortada, right? So I get that fucking thing. I go to get in my car. And there's somebody in the fucking crosswalk. And there's this impatient cunt in a van. And the second the person gets out of the crosswalk, I'm getting into my car with two coffees. And I just hear the van going, ah! coming up the street. And I'm like, you know, I like my left leg and arm. So in a haste, I go to reach and close my door with my coffee in my hand. And it fucking falls to the ground. <laughs> I closed the door, and you know what? The van was actually, he had changed lanes because he saw my car. I didn't even need to do it, and I spilt my coffee. And it was one of those things. It was just so sad. I was so looking forward to it that I, I didn't even get upset. And I was actually kind of thinking, like, dropping your coffee as an adult is the, that's the adult equivalent of, like, the ice cream falling off the cone as a kid. And I was just like, ah. You know, I want to make sure her coffee is still the right temperature. I'll bring it home and I'll just make a fucking coffee. So I made myself a little cappuccino, sat on the back porch, did a little bit of French. And uh, now, I'm, now I'm talking to you. And when I was on Instagram again, because I am, I have an espresso too. I just go back to back, fucking bang, bang. Just like I used to drink beer in a shot. And uh, I see... Marshawn Lynch, one of the greatest running backs of all time. I would say the most unstoppable guy since Earl Campbell. And uh, talking to Shannon Sharp, Hall of Famer, right? And they're talking about the end of that Seattle Seahawks-Patriots game. And uh, you got to see the clip. And it's amazing. And everything that they say and everything, I, I definitely agree with it. But I, I got to be honest with you. And you're going to say this is because I'm a fucking Pats fan. But, like, Bill Belichick is like, and I'm just going to say this because this fucking assholes right now acting like Tom Brady is the reason why we won all those Super Bowls and Belichick isn't shit without him. It's like that fucking guy, first of all, Belichick drafted him 
and then built a team around him for 20 straight fucking years and just kept with second round fucking draft picks and did what he did. And not to mention, Tom would have only won five with us if it wasn't for the brilliant coaching of Bill Belichick in that Seattle game, having the Patriots prepared for that play. Every mouth breather in the world is like, why are they giving a fucking beast mode? Everybody knew that he was going to get the ball. Right? So Pete Carroll stay. I don't know how many times i got to break this down. He goes, I'll call this play because everybody's thinking it's Marshawn Lynch. I still have another down to give it to him. He's fucking beast mode. I like my chances there. But this play here, the whole season has either been a touchdown or incomplete. It's 100% safe. The analytics said it was safe. But he ran into a guy named Bill Belichick who actually had his team prepared for it. And here's a fucking name that never comes up in that moment. The hero of the moment, Malcolm Butler. That name is being lost to history because everybody's so busy talking about like how fucking Pete Carroll fucked up in that moment. And nobody's looking at it like, wow, the genius of Bill Belichick. It's kind of like the uh, 18 and one Patriots. It's not that the Giants had the greatest fucking playoff run that I've seen Maybe ever. It's not that Eli arrived and became the superstar. You know, the fucking New York media state still gave him shit. That wasn't the story. It wasn't that the Giants had this unbelievable run. It was that the Patriots lost. So um, this segment is called Shining the Light on What the Fuck You Should Be Looking At If You Understand Football. Um. Bill Belichick is such a fucking genius that he made Pete Carroll look like the dumbest fucking coach of all time. And Pete Carroll isn't. He's a Hall of Fame fucking coach. All right. And it's very easy after something doesn't fucking work out to be like, well, why the fuck didn't you just do this? You know, it's like all those fucking assholes when uh, that that submersible went under all these fucking assholes. Like, you wouldn't catch me fucking doing that. What the fuck are you talking about? Look at some of the rides you go on at Six Flags. Fucking bungee cord to your goddamn leg and, you know, and all of these stupid fucking roller coasters that they run 24-7 and occasionally spray some WD-40 on. You'll fucking get on one of those. You just don't have a boat. Oh, my God. I just spilled that fucking coffee. What is going on with me today? We're on the couch. She's going to fucking kill me. Dab at it. Dab at it. Jesus Christ. This is what they always say. Dab at it. Don't fucking wipe it. Dab it. Fucking dab at it. Do-do-do. Hand towel. I'm sure this will work good. Something that's designed to dry off your hands is now being used to clean up a mess. I spilled a cup of coffee yesterday, walking up a flight of stairs. I didn't lift my leg high enough, so I caught my toes on the next stair, and I went, Ugh. did one of those, right? What'd you do, Bill? I went, Ugh. Fucking dump my goddamn coffee. I think this is the universe saying, Bill, you're drinking too much coffee and you need to stop. But you know what? I haven't hit bottom yet, so I'm going to keep going. Um, anyway, so I don't, I don't know. I'm just Malcolm Butler, everybody. Just, you know, just have the decency. Because he knew the play was coming. Not only did he, he didn't just jump in and knock it down. He jumped the fucking route and intercepted the ball because Bill Belichick had him fucking prepared. Remember Tom Brady jumping up and down like a little school kid? He thought he had the fucking game was lost. People forget that because he went down to Titty Town and fucking won one with Tampa Bay, right? Fucking the Hooters capital of the world. He went down there and fucking won another one. Then all these just the level of fucking idiots. Who watch football all the time and all they do is watch the ball. <clears throat> and like, he won six there and then he left and then he won one. And he, Bill Belichick hasn't won one since. So therefore, all six of those are the fucking. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it wasn't fucking Belichick. It wasn't Teddy Bruschi. It wasn't all these fucking guys that we had. It wasn't all of these other guys. It was just Tom Brady. He was blocking, he was running. What about when they threw the fucking ball to Tom Brady? He was wide open against the Eagles, and he dropped it. You remember that? <laughs> My favorite part of that Super Bowl 
was then the Eagles run the same play and it's successful. And then Collinsworth is like, I've never seen it. Ah, shit. Now I got a phone call. I got a phone call. Sorry, I had a phone call there. Yeah, Collins was like, I never seen anything like that. It's like, dude, you just saw it. <laughs> what about Willie McGinnis? One of the greatest fucking linebackers of all time. Like, how many fucking games did that guy win? What about Edelman? Everybody talks about the fucking comeback against uh, the fucking Atlanta Falcons. What about that catch Edelman made that no one would have fucking made? Tom Brady did everything. Bill Belichick, he just sat there with his thumbs up and said, how, how did Bill Parcells do without Bill Belichick? I am so fucking sick of being this right all the time, guys. I just can't handle the pressure anymore of trying to educate you fucking mouth-breathing morons. I'm better than all of you. Um, I'm just a man who dropped his coffee this morning and for whatever reason is yelling about a football game that we won 10 fucking years ago. Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler. Do your job. Um, anyway, plowing ahead. What a crazy week in football, huh? What a fuck? I mean, Jesus Christ. Am I nuts? Um, old Billy. Old Billy, two and two. Two and two. What, what week are we in? I am, uh, well, I can figure this out. I am 11, it was 9 and 7, so now I'm 11 and 9. That doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. We're five weeks in, and I have yet, I have yet to have a losing week betting against the book. I've only had one winning week, 3 and 1. All right? I've gone 2 and 2 for the other four weeks. And everybody would be like, you know, this is Bill Burr, not Bill Belichick. We have to get rid of this fucking guy. And I'm just sitting there going like, hey, you know, the key to a good relationship is balance. I mean, if we win all the time, then people aren't going to like us. And then they're going to accuse us of, of cheating because they're too fucking stupid. That they're not smart enough to learn how to beat us. So then they have to get on the competition committee and fucking change the rules of the game to tip it in their favor and then steal our offense. But that's not cheating. It's not cheating when you do that in Indianapolis. It's Indianapolis. They, they grow our corn. Now, you know, those people out there, they put their pants on one leg at a time as they go to their clan meeting. Um, oh, the caffeine, she's kicking in. I did full downs the other day in, in the helicopter, man. Um, I was fucking crushing it. The only thing I have to do is at the very end is add left pedal. That's what I have to do. Because if I was ever to land on the grass there. That was just a little cock eye, because you want to look right down at your feet like that's the ground. That's the ground right there. Am I going to make it? But you don't. You look long, like a fucking stud. Like, I know I'm landing this shit. I got to make sure I'm straight, because once somebody fixes this thing, I'm flying it over that fucking horizon. That's how you're supposed to be. I like Billy Caffeine. Billy Caffeine has confidence. Billy Caffeine talks shit. Billy A.M. Billy A.M.'s looking at the ground. His fucking shoulders are slumped. Pajamas are fucking cockeyed. You know what? I finally figured, did I talk about this? I finally figured out why as you get it as an old man, why your your ass crack is always coming out of the back of your pants. Oh, I already talked about it. It's your fucking belly pushes the pants down below sea level, right? The more your ass crack starts to show like fucking Lake Mead out in Vegas. And then all your sins are fucking exposed. <laughs> That's what it is. That's the analogy. It's like Lake Mead slowly drying up. Is your belly, you know, because it's not only your belly. I said that on uh, on Monday that it was your belly. The third titty is what I call it. Uh, your third titty. You can't have a belly. Because even if your pecs are fucking rock hard like your cock used to be when you woke up in the morning. Um even if your pecs are rock hard, if you got that third fucking titty, it brings the other two down. It's like having a rat in the house. He's, ta- he's going to the feds. Your fucking belly makes your two pecs look like titties. And then it's just like, you know, you don't want that. Every woman in the world just feeling bad for your wife going, look at that sweaty fucking mess. Just trying to hammer away, you know. He got one more fucking season on top with the league minimum. 
Um, anyway, uh, the fuck was I? I just went off on that fucking thing. There was something else that I wanted to talk to you guys about, and I and I for the life of me, I can't remember. Um, oh, I'm also on pins and needles because. Uh, you know, there's something very important about to happen in my career, and I'm not allowed to talk about it because I tow the fucking company line. All right? This is Bill Burr, not fucking Bill Ma. <laughs> uh, oh, I know what I wanted to talk about. Um, no, I'm not towing the company line. I'm standing with the people. That's what I'm doing, right? There you go. Oh, Billy Hero. Oh, I was talking about Billy A.M. You know, this fucking shuffling, you know, when you, you, your slippers are just. You walking down the, the fucking. Uh, the hallway down to your kids rooms and you, the way you're moving your feet, you might as well be on cross country skis. By the way, that's another one. All right. If you're dating somebody who can't p even fucking pick their feet up. To walk down the street or across the fucking hall, you have to get out of that relationship because I'm going to tell you right now, that is a metaphor. There's a metaphor. They're going to be a drag. You know, like you ever go, you ever go bet the ponies? You remember when they have the little carriages behind them and you'd see that guy pulling back on his horse so he wouldn't fucking win because the fix was in? That's what they're going to do to you. That's what they're going to do to your dreams. That's what they're going to do to something else because there always has to be three examples. Why can't there just be two? I love how two is like, well, you know, anybody can come up with two. Three, you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, Jesus, that guy made a fucking point. And just the sound of them dragging those feet across the fucking floor. Every morning, you start anticipating it. You start waking up earlier so you can just go down. And have a peaceful breakfast without the sound of them dragging their goddamn loser feet across the fucking linoleum. And what happens? No matter how, you know, you get up early. Yeah, where you go? You're going to. No, no, no. Honey, honey, keep sleeping. Oh, I'll go down. Oh, oh, I'll make you breakfast. Ugh. And then you just find yourself thinking murderous thoughts. And you try and you're rewinding in your head. Like how, what happened to you in your childhood that led to you marrying a shuffler? <laughs> Ladies, when you meet a guy, all right, he's wearing a suit and all of that shit. You know, he's got his fucking little tassels on his loafers and stuff. All right, if you can't. You know, be sitting down. You got to go, oh, those are nice shoes. Let me see those, you know. And then he'll fucking, you know, bring them up a little bit. Look at the soles. You look at the soles of a man's shoes, you'll see the man's soul. You'll see who the fuck he is. If the tops look really fucking new and the bottoms look like he got fucking dragged by a bread truck, you don't want to be with that person. Just a little dating advice. Just a little dating advice. If you are dating somebody that yawns and doesn't cover their mouth and literally is doing like a fucking yawn, like one of those big cats in Africa, except they're not bringing home the fucking bacon, you're going to start thinking about having a harpoon and throwing it into the back of their throat. And if you marry somebody that shuffles their feet and yawns like a fucking cheetah, like a leopard, <laughs> Dude, you want to hear a fucking hilarious text message that I got from a buddy of mine back in Boston? Listen to this. This this is listen to this fucking poetry. Uh, and I'll read it in his accent. Uh, my personal feeling is that these insolent townie types are getting exposed for their small town shenanigans. <laughs> I literally wrote back that should be in a fucking movie. I mean, you could have pitched that line to be in the fucking departed. Um, by the way, he was talking about a murder slash cover up. That was his take on it. My personal feeling, not his feeling, his personal feeling. 
is that these insular townie types are getting exposed for their small town shenanigans. Small town shenanigans, murdering somebody and covering up. Fucking hilarious. Um, speaking of the fucking departed, one of the great Hollywood combinations of all time. I mean, I think I can promote somebody else's movie, right? Is that how it fucking works? Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese have a new movie coming out, and I will be seeing that. Um, I'm going to see that this weekend. Killers of the Flower Moon. I actually started to read the book and then realized 80 pages in that I was too dumb to do this. I also found out that there was a movie. Hey, the lovely Nia. Come on in, sweetheart. Hi. I'm doing my podcast. Come here. Can I just read you one thing before I hit pause? Um, this is what my buddy wrote me Okay. from back in Boston. Hi, everybody on the podcast. Oh. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while because I, you know, I feel like our, our interactions are on my Instagram now, not so much on the podcast. Oh, really? Did you happen to know your Instagram page? Look at you just needy promo. <laughs> you fucking hua. <laughs> How did Don't you call me a hua. I didn't call you a hua. I you called call you a hua. hua. <laughs> you watch The Sopranos. You think it's funny. Uh, real quickly, yes, uh, um, quickly. how'd you sleep last night? It was great. Huh? Great. Huh? Bill was, <laughs> I had, you know, I was having a bit of a rough day yesterday. I didn't have enough sleep. I was traveling recently. Reed lashing out at her husband. I was a little grumpy. La uh, just threw say, some things. I did not throw things. Stop, t stop telling me You threw your that. words at me. And no, I have to tell oh you God, that, that, words, that hurt more most... than you actually throwing something. Oh, God. You're the main thrower of things. Um. Anyway. You just reached for that. What was I going to say? Oh, oh. so, yes, I was having I was having a little bit of case of the grumpies. Uh, you, uh, and Bill said, you know, why don't you sleep over the garage? <laughs> and get your nine hours. <laughs> That's how I treat the ladies. Um, Why don't you go sleep over the garage? Yeah, go sleep over the garage. Um, yeah, anyway. So slash I podcast did that. studio slash, slash workout room slash, slash everything. Yes. Uh, the all purpose room. <laughs> um, and I'm glad that I did because I had a great night's sleep and I feel so. Get to the point. Better. Your husband is awesome. This isn't about you. I thought it was. No. Oh, the point is my husband's awesome. There we go. All right, you gotta press pause. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right, I didn't even have to fucking stop. She just, oh, whatever. Anyway, plowing ahead here. Um, yes. So don't marry a fucking shoe shuffling big yawner. All right. And then uh, I got, well, I got to bounce this out. I got to give guys advice. The kind of woman that you should fucking stay away from. Um, most of them. I mean, bang all of them, but like stay away from most of them, if that makes sense. That's my dating advice. <laughs> uh, when did a playboy become a fuck boy? Like they've really just labeled everything to try to make. Don't fucking listen. You know, all these. Oh, he's just a fuck boy. Oh, fuck you. Do you ever think that maybe he banged you and you just weren't interesting enough to be in a relationship? Great. He fucked you and he left. Way less painful than him fucking you, hanging around and listening to your boring stories and lying to you and saying that he loves you. All right. Fuck boys, formerly known as playboys, are some of the most honest people out there, you know, or the other way is they get their lie out of the way quickly. It's quickly understood that they just wanted to fuck you. And who's kidding who? You wanted to fuck him. He came in there with his blazer and he had his scarf around his fucking neck. Old school playboy. He came in there. You were enamored. Right? You were enamored and you wanted to see what would it be like with a guy that could bang anybody but has decided tonight to bang me. Right? And you live that life and your ego gets in the way. Your ego told you that you were more interesting than any other woman out there. You were the most interesting woman on the planet. Well, guess what? You're not. And this is the great thing about being a woman, right? Is 
even when you lose, you still got fucked. I've never met a guy that got laid and then she didn't call back and then, well, what the fuck? He doesn't give a fuck. I had a good time. I had a good time. I wish it continued. It didn't. But at the end of the day, it was a good fucking time. Women are like, I thought I was going to be able to take half your shit. I thought I was going to have the option to work or not. Like They want that and and dick. While listening to Beyonce and acting like they're an independent woman. I mean, that is the world that we're living in. And then when you look at other countries around the world and you see the way they treat their women, you start to understand. Yes, it was wrong to give women this many rights. People, when we return, we're going to be talking about women's suffrage. Did we go too far as men? Did you guys ever used to listen to the Phil Hendry show when he used to do shit like that? And then he would he would imitate a fake caller calling in going like and he would just use like an effect and he would just be going like, yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't. I don't think women should have the right to vote. And he would just keep doing that until somebody finally took the fucking bait. And then he would just argue with them as the caller. And then he would, as the host, try to act like he was trying to stop them from arguing while he would egg the other person on. It was one of the most, you know, all of these people that think they know what trolling is. All right, all you goddamn young people with your whole lives ahead of you. Um, <clears throat> I've drank, I've drank so many cups of coffee this week that I'm surprised I didn't buy a Vespa. <laughs> I mean, once you drink as much coffee as I drank this week, like that, a Vespa should just show up and they just hand you the bill and you're like, I, I don't, I don't want no, just. You're you're in this life now, you know, and then I do some pretentious video, you know, the American who tries to fucking act like they're European because they've never really been. They haven't been there long enough to realize that they're assholes, too. They start romanticizing everything over there. Um, Wait, Bill, are you talking about yourself? Yes. I'd love to have a Vespa, some douchey toothpaste color, drive it down the fucking street, you know. Get hit by a Nissan Leaf, walk with the limp for the rest of my life, and lie to people that I was on a Harley. These are the things that I think about. All right, let's uh, let's do the reads for this week. Let's do the reads, baby. That's the new intro song. How did you like it? Was it tone deaf enough? Uh, I'm like five fucking Moto GP races behind, and I know that Jorge Lorenzo was that who it was? Jorge Mir, somebody is is taking over. Uh, is in first place in front of uh, Pekka Binyang. Um And I need to get caught up. I'm going to get caught up after the craziness of this week that I just have to sit there and keep my fucking mouth shut. Uh, even though it's one of the most important things in my life. <laughs> All right, Helix, everybody. Helix? It's Helix Sleep, everyone. The Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux Collection. The newly released Helix Elite Collection, a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers. Elite Collection, I thought it was going to be a design for bankers and, and people that run corporations. No, it's for big and tall sleepers. All right, tall people and fat people. And even a mattress made just for kids. How will you know which Helix mattress works best for you and your body? Take the Helix sleep quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your Dilwa, free of charge. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. Models with memory. I thought models were dumb. Oh, geez, that's a dad joke. Models with memory, foam layers to provide... Optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side. Models with a more responsive form, foam, sorry, to cradle your body for essential. I want to get cradled by a model. 
uh, essential support in stomach and back sleeping positions, plus enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. Then you don't have to crank the AC. And if your spy needs some extra TLC, they got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with premium foam layers on top. It's the perfect combination of comfort and support. Jesus Christ, how long does it take to describe a fucking mattress? There's like another five fuck. Plus, Helix mattress are American made. That's right. Red, white, and blue. And come with a 10 to 15 year warranty depending on the model. All right, that I like. American made. You could have fucking stopped describing the foam. Uh, don't want to take my word for it. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress pick by GQ and Wired Magazine. It's even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving your sleep. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. For our listeners, go to helixsleep.com slash burr and use the code HELIXPARTNERS20, H-E-L-I-X-P-A-R-T-N-E-R-20. Not partners, Helix Partner, Helix Partner. This is the, their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. All right, that's the podcast, everybody. Um, enjoy the music, and then we'll have a bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning. Fuck that. Um, enjoy your weekend, you cunts. Let's go, Pax. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for uh, October 19th, 2015. How's it going? How are ya? I'm on the road. I'm on the road again. Chicka boom, chicka boom, boom, boom. I just can't wait to get on the road again. Well, you know what? I can't wait to get on the road again because I'm an old man, and I'm out here, and I'm cold. (laughs) Oh God, I love the Midwest, but it's right right when the fucking winter starts. This can be kind of a motherfucker. You know, this this takes me back to my days. Back in the day when I was young and I had more freckles, um, and I used to do uh, I used to do all the college gigs out here. Um, you know, my agent uh, Bass Shula used to always book me. Um, they were based out of, still are based out of Chicago, and they used to just book me in like Duluth, Des Moines, the Quad Cities, Hayes, Nebraska, Grand Junction, Colorado. Colorado wasn't as bad because you had the Rocky Mountains to look at. You could be like, oh my God, it looks like a beer commercial. <laughs> you know, that guy who does those fucking Ram commercials. What's his name? Sam Elliott would get on there. Coors beer brewed in the Rocky Mountains. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. They don't have a factory up in the Rocky Mountains. They don't. It's on the flatlands. It's probably somewhere in Denver. Although the rent's probably too high. I don't know where it is. Where the fuck can you fucking shuttle in illegal immigrants in and out the back door and nobody will see it? You know? That's not up in there. You're not going to get illegal immigrants to go up to a fucking mountain. All right? They're already like, listen, dude, I already swam across the fucking filthy river to get in here. Okay? I'm not walking up a mountain. You know, if you're going to fucking exploit me with my labor, we're doing it right here. And then the guy, I build a factory around him. Um, maybe it is up in the mountains. I have no idea. I just remember at one point I, w- I was rafting, not rafting. I was in like a little inner tube going down the river with a bunch of other fucking people. That was the same river. Oh, that's right. We went by the Coors factory. I'm like, this is the fucking factory. With all those, you know, those Denver hippies, they're a specific kind of hippie, the Denver hippie, you know, with their action sandals, you know, same sort of look at those hippie toes kind of thing. But they also have that look like, you know, they're going to go swing on a rope and jump into a fucking lake. Those Denver hippies, you know, them, they're like fucking ski instructors for their whole lives, right? Like 50, you still got long hair. You know, fucking go out and buy one of those squirrel suits, one of those flying squirrel suits, like that type of shit, right? I think I I went from hippies into, uh, I don't know what those people are, those people who jump off of buildings with their parachute wadded up in their hand like like a bouquet at a wedding, you know, and then they just throw it, whee, except it saves their life. 
you know. I don't mind that those cunts do it. It just bugs me that they have to film it. You know what I mean? You know, if you're awesome, why can't you just be awesome and just go do it, you know? The fact that you got to film it, that really knocks it down for me. You never saw Superman with a little fucking GoPro on, did you? He just fucking went out and saved people. Then he goes home and puts his fucking Janine Garofalo glasses back on. He goes back, you know, goes back to the fucking uh, the newspaper. Dude, Clark Kent couldn't close a fucking piece of pussy if it, I, he never he never banged Lois Lane, did he? I mean, granted, she had a crush on a superhero, but you know you could work on her insecurities. Come on, Lois, you're not going to land that. I'm right here. Let's make a life together, right? Can you take off my navy blue trousers over here and do something? Give me a little help. Can you get the kryptonite out of my nuts there, Loey? Right? These fucking assholes jumping around on those little flying squirrel suits. It's just, you know, I don't understand why you feel the need you have to film yourself. To be a little more Superman. All right? A little, little less... Uh, Colorado Rocky Mountain hippie. Oh, they're the worst. They're the worst. You know, when you go to San Francisco and you run into a hippie, it's like you, you expect it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that's right. All the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. And the sky is gray. I have dirty feet. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. I usually can kind of carry it to him. Um, when you go to Rocky Mountains, what, what do you expect? Do you expect you're going to see that guy walking around with the orange crush barrel around him? Remember that guy? I think he died. The guy used to go to all the Broncos games. You know? You expect you're going to see that. You're going to see some uh, frontier kind of ladies. Right? You expect to see Sam Elliott drinking a Coors, Coors Light. The silver bullet. That's what you expect to see. And then you show up and it's just this new... Fucking hippie. This hippie that skis. Hippies don't ski. Right? Hippies don't base jump. It's a special kind of heat when you're up there, too, in the Mile High City. By the way, how about how about a hand for the Cleveland Browns this way, this week? You know, finding 87, possibly 88 ways to lose that game to the Denver Broncos. Granted, the Broncos were fucking up, too. Unreal. When fucking uh, Peyton threw that pick, if Eli threw it, it would have been dropped. You know? Fucking Eli is, the, the, I'm telling you, I don't ever want to see that guy on the other side of the field again. The football gods love Eli Manning. <laughs> Unless he plays the Eagles. The Eagles always play the Giants tough. There's always that one team. You know, there's always that one fucking Achilles. But I swear to God, if Eli threw that ball, you know, that the linebacker went right to him. He would have been like, oh, take, 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 take. he would have dropped it. And Eli would have got there with his face all mushed into that fucking helmet. And he just looking at it. Like, Eli, he looks so dumb in a helmet. He should be still wearing his dockers with his pads underneath it. You know? But you know goddamn well Eli's going to go down the field. He's going to throw a fucking ball. Somebody's going to catch it between their helmet and their taint. It's just, it's over. Even when he fucks up, like, just... Shit just, it's, it's over. You cannot beat the man. <laughs> At some point, the glass slipper's got to turn back into a pumpkin. That's my prediction this year, is Eli's going to throw a pick in a big situation, and for the first time in his career, somebody's actually going to hold on to it. That's what I'm hoping, anyways. All right, plowing ahead here. So Peyton throws a pick because he's not Eli, and the football gods don't like Peyton. Because Peyton has godlike numbers and they're intimidated by him. They look at Eli. They go, "Oh, well, look at this guy. He's got a cold or something. I don't. I don't. What's he's got? The mumps? What's going on with his cheeks?" So Peyton throws the ball. The fucking the Browns intercept it. They're on like they're on the fucking on Denver's thirty nine yard line. It's a tie fucking game. I can't even remember if it was overtime or not. I had bad a bad sing, signal on the bus there, right? And. Um, all right, so they're, they're on the 39, first and, first and 10. You're on the 39-yard line. Football fans, how long a field goal is that? Huh? Come on. Do the math. Little douchebag, do the math. Um, you had 10 yards for the end zone. That's 49 yards plus 8 yards when they got to hike it. 
49 and 8 is 57. It's a 57 yada. So they basically need to get they need to get a first down. Okay? Move the ball fucking forward. So at the very least, you know, you can take a long shot at a field goal. 47 yarders, no walk in the park, but these fucking kids can, they can do it today. You know, when, even when they're little, they're kicking virtual reality field goals right into their flat screen TV. You've seen the videos, and all of a sudden their sneaker comes off and breaks the TV, and everybody laughs. Ha ha, he he, what happened? Well, let's throw that fucking thing out and get another $800 fucking TV. And where does that flat screen go? Why is there anybody out there that can repair a flat screen TV? When I was a kid, when you had those fucking square TVs that were on the legs that weighed like 900 pounds, way heavier than a flat screen, right? You know, it's like a fucking flat screen. It's like a, uh, like a giant's fucking iPhone, you know, basically, relatively, the weight, you know? Those old school fucking square TVs, you know, it was like, I don't, I don't know why they were, they were like a safe. You couldn't move those fucking things. But still, we did. You moved it out the door and somebody fixed it and you came back to give it a new tube. I don't understand why you can't repair anything nowadays. Then everybody's like, oh, you know, oh, you broke the TV and then it ends up in the fucking ocean. Right? Get the fucking thing fixed, you cunt. Do you know my wife got our microwave fixed? so excited i'm so excited i don't even use the microwave because a long time ago i was doing a fucking show and one of the actors on there said hey you know i don't i don't you know i don't need anything out of a microwave and i said oh really that that's being why is that he's like well they did an experiment where uh they watered these plants with water and they watered these other plants with water that had been stuck in a microwave for like a minute each day each day they'd microwave the water and uh, there was no nutrition, no nutrients left. So I guess it doesn't really cause any cancer or anything, but it just kind of nukes all your fucking... There's nothing in there. You just, you're just you eating like space is what you're eating. You're eating something that's going to fill up the space in your stomach is what I'm trying to say, right? Does that make any fucking sense? I don't know. I have no idea. I'm laying in a fucking bed here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. What do you want from me? The creepy downtown of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Jesus Christ. Well, I didn't get... Let me get back to the game here. So they fucking... Uh, so he throws the pick. And what do they do? They got three fucking plays. The very least, you got to run three plays to advance the fucking ball. First play, they lose two yards. Now it's a 59-yarder. The next play, they take a fucking sack for like 10 yards. Now it's like a 70-yarder. And then they fucking ran it like a cunt, and it just, the guy just falls down. Maybe it was two runs in a sack. I can't remember what. And then they got to punt the ball away. You know what I did? Because I've watched enough football in my life, I shut the fucking TV off. Because I'm like, that's it. Yo, that, that's, that's the game. It's the game right there. You had your fucking opportunity. And you blew it. You know, it's like that broad at work. Or that chick at school. You should have asked out. You didn't do it. You know? And here you are, years later, tracking it down on fucking Facebook. All right? It's over. It's fucking over. Let it go. Same thing with the Browns. It's fucking over. So anyways, like I said, I'm here in downtown, um, I'm in downtown uh, Fort Wayne here, going to drive down to Cincinnati, and uh, I love it out here, man. I mean, I don't like when all the crops are cut down. It isn't quite that time yet. That's the worst when you're out here in like February and the crops are cut down, right? And it's overcast, that overcast sky, you know, because it's so fucking flat. You can actually look, look out as you're driving down these country roads. You see where the overcast sky meets the ground. And the crops are cut down, dude. And, you know, I never understood how a band like Slipknot came from fucking Iowa. I'm like, what, what, what the fuck are they so goddamn angry about? Yeah, you're out here milking cows, you know? Meeting chicks on FarmersOnly.com. I mean, there's a lot, lot to be happy about out here. And when I went out there in February, I was like, okay, I get it. Now I get it. There's nothing to fucking do out here. Eight, seven, six, 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 five, right? All of a sudden, it all starts making fence. Yeah. Making fence, making sense. Um, this fucking goddamn screen saving thing. My fucking computer. Five seconds, I got to put my password in. Why are they acting like I'm so fucking important? I know all you young cunts are like, oh, go into your settings, and you go into your fucking settings, you douche. Look at 
Look at this. I know what my fucking password is, and I never get it right the first time. Oh, Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on. Did I forget my password? This would be fucked up. This would be embarrassing. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. One time. One time. Daddy needs a winner. All right. There we go. Just click on your finder and go into the settings and hit application. Um, hey, how about the Patriots, huh? Beat the Colts. Great game. Great game. Andrew Luck's a fucking man, dude. The guy's a fucking man. I love watching that guy play. Um, he's not a whiner. Takes his hits. He gets back up. He helps the guy up who hit him. He's just a fucking stud. And um, I really realized it when I watched it last night that it wasn't. I, I don't hate the Colts. I hate Jerry uh, Jerry Jones. I hate Jim Irsay. I hate their fucking owner. Um, and I hate a lot of their fans. I had fun last night in Fort Wayne. I was trying to get them to admit it. I go, come on, you guys, admit it. Admit it. The lights are down. No one can see you. Admit it. You lost by thirty eight points. All right. It wasn't because of the air pressure. Come on. Be honest with yourselves. <laughs> Somebody said Tom Brady was gay or he was a fag or something like that, you know. And uh, I just went on this whole riff about how beautiful a man Tom Brady was, you know, and how beautiful his wife was. And that deep inside, I was talking to the person in the crowd, that they realized that genetically... They had no hope of, a, like, a woman like Giselle ever, really ever seeing them for who they are. Like, they could literally walk into the room with their head on fire, and Giselle still wouldn't notice them. And as they watched Tom Brady march down the field towards yet another championship somewhere in their, in their brain, the truth of that is, is, is screaming at them. I went to a dark place. Whatever. I'm in the fucking Midwest. They're starting to cut the crops down. Um, I was at the Embassy Theater last night, and uh, I actually watched this whole video on that. Um, I love old theaters that were going to get fucking torn down and people saved them. That's actually um, one of my uh, soft spots as far as uh, something I could get behind. I actually did a gig in Fresno, and I talked to the guy, and he was like still trying to raise money to keep that thing going. And I, that reminded me how I told him I was going to go up there and maybe do a show or something like that. I can't remember if it was in Fresno or if it was the one in uh, Bakersfield. I don't remember, but they were both great theaters. And um, I watched this whole video on it. And, like, like Bob Hope had his first MC gig here. Just the, the level. Of, they always had the same history. These old theaters was always like it was a vaudeville theater, you know, and then it became a movie theater. And then, uh, you know, it starts to go down. In, like, the late 50s and 60s, it becomes a porno house. And then in the 70s, they were going to tear it down, and then somebody came in and saved the fucking thing. And now it's awesome again. And uh, the Embassy Theater basically had that same thing, minus the porno house. It was never a porno house, which makes sense here because they don't sell booze on Sundays. Like, all the liquor stores are closed. They don't even sell beer out here but um dude they got a, they got a minor league uh whatever basketball team out here it's called the mad ants how fucking hilarious it's a fucking great name the fort wayne mad ants um i'm a nerd for this shit i love this stuff out here i used to have family lived out here you know way back way back like a hundred years ago and um they had a farm this is i have this weird connection out even though i didn't grow up out here my bloodline is from out here Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, all of that shit. So I have this weird connection when I come out here. Um, you know, I had family lived in Wisconsin, all these places that I'm going to. So like they're going to the city was Chicago. You know, that was the big deal. And um, so anyways, and I was hoping when I was going to go to Chicago that the fucking Cubs were going to be in the World Series. How exciting would that be? How exciting would that be? And uh, now look at it. Oh, by, by the way, can we go back a second? Those fo I don't understand people who thought that we were going to beat the Colts by a thousand fucking points. The Colts made it to the AFC Championship game. I, I, I just don't fucking understand how people look at it. And ESPN hyped it up that way. 
And then during the game, they're going like, well, what's going on here? Everybody thought that they were going to fucking... It's like what? Because Tom Brady's dad says score fucking 60 points on him. All of a sudden, that's the line. That's like watching Toronto play in Kansas City. They hit one walk-off home run and flip their fucking mullets, you know? And do, you know, you know, you fucking actors run in musical theater, that attitude run, where they start to run sideways looking at the crowd and then do like the head whip and then fucking run off stage with their arms dangling behind them. That's how Toronto ran the bases and everybody's like, oh shit, here come the Blue Jays. Giving Kansas City no respect whatsoever. Kansas City went to the dance last year. They almost won the fucking World Series. And here comes Toronto, these dirty, filthy bird cunts, come waltzing in like it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to the World Series. And now look at you. You got the old right there, Fred. You're down 0-2. All right? So why don't you quit flipping your fucking bats and get back to playing the goddamn game so a fan like me can enjoy a nice seven-game series? Now look at you, you dumb cunt. You got to win four out of five. So anyways, um, I love Kansas City, man. I love the fucking Royals. Um, goes way back in the day when the Red Sox could never beat the fucking Yankees. And like like three times in four years, Kansas City played uh, played the Yankees in the for the pennant is how they used to say it. They're playing for the pennant. It wasn't the ALCS back then. It was just for the pennant, right? Look at me. And I used to sit on the corner selling newspapers for a nickel. Step right up. Step right up. Extra, extra, read all about it. Dodge has a new car called the Opal. Um, and that's the way it was, 1977. Um so they played him in 77 and 78 and lost and then they played him in 81 or played him in 80 and won and then lost to the Phillies in the uh in the World Series there. Um so anyways, yeah, I got this weird thing. I don't like the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't want them winning our World Series. I feel like our World Series trophy belongs here in America. It's one of the weird like patriotic things that I have. Like if Toronto played the Yankees, I'd actually root for the Yankees as much as it would kill me, but you know, what the fuck do I care? They got 27 championships. Do I give a shit if they get 28? We're not catching them, right? It's a foregone conclusion. You know, they went on the run. Whoever goes on the run early on, you know, they they have it forever. Fucking Montreal. When you're fucking winning them, like, before the Titanic sank, nobody's going to catch you. If you went on a run back then, you're not going to. There was, like, nine fucking teams, and you, you had to win, like, two two playoff series. Dude, in baseball, do you know if you won the division that was winning the pennant? There was no ALCS, no wild card, no nothing. You just immediately went to the World Series. So you had to win one playoff series. So I got to tell you, I got this weird thing with that. Like, you know, even like the Celtics, when we won like a, we won 11 in a row or nine in a row, 11 in fucking, you know, 13 years or something like that. I mean, come on. Come on. You, that's, that's beer league shit. That's what's so amazing about the Lakers is we did that and the Lakers still came and caught us. I mean, that's why I think, you know, they're the greatest fucking franchise in the modern era since 1970. And they've won more championships than anybody since then. And as much as it fucking kills me to say that it's true, it's fucking true. Um, They had that devastating combination of of they knew how to pick talent. And then when it came into the free agency era, uh, they knew how to play that game and we didn't and that hurt us and also len bias dying fucked us out of at least one to three championships depending on who you talk to oh my god len we got len bias in 1986 our strongest fucking team and then we we're gonna have len bias basically jordan light was we i mean we were all so excited oh my god we're finally gonna have a celtic that can dunk you know, because all the Celtics fans, as much as they didn't want to admit it, it, watching the Showtime Lakers was so much fucking fun. If they weren't playing the Celtics, because, you know, then you're rooting for the Celtics. But I used to watch them all the fun. They were on TV. I, I loved watching the Lakers, the fucking Showtime Lakers. But come on, man. That was, I was actually talking last night when we were on the bus hanging out and we were watching uh, the end of the Patriots. It was so fucking great, man. We had the bus right behind the theater. And uh, the theater hooked us up like a nine-pack of uh, Miller Lights, 
with the giant fucking opening, you know, so you can pour it down your fucking bass mouth. And uh, we were sitting in there. Verzi was finishing up a cigar outside, right? And we were talking about uh, Bartnick goes, all right, you're, you're Mount Rushmore of football coaches. And he said Lombardi, Chuck Knoll, Bill Walsh, Bill Belichick. And I said the exact same thing. I said, I said except not Chuck Knoll. Um, and I picked, uh, what's his face? I just spaced on his fucking name. Um, Don Coriel. <laughs> Air Coriel. I just thought he was ahead of his fucking time. And uh, it really informed, I think, Bill Walsh coming up with the fucking uh, West Coast offense. There was nothing more exciting in the, than in the late 70s, early 80s, the San Diego Chargers on Monday Night Football, knowing that they were going to throw the ball on first down. I, you don't understand what, the, what a game changer that was. We were 10 years away from three yards in a cloud of dust where you just fucking ran it, ran it, ran it, and then you just threw it if you had to, which is why Johnny Unitas' fucking numbers are insane. The fact that he threw for 41,000 yards during the 50s and 60s is, is fucking insane, and which is why he's always in my top three, four quarterbacks of all time. But anyways, to watch, I don't know, I absolutely love those guys. Um I don't know how the fuck I got onto that thing. Let me read some advertising here before uh, I completely space out here. We've got a couple of new people here. We always got new people. It's a revolving door here in this fucking podcast with the advertising. All right. All right. How many more of these are there? There's two more. Let's uh, let's break it up, dude. My fucking brain is tired today. I'm tired this morning. Oh, Jesus. I'm tired. Hey, how about those Bruins? How about those fucking Bruins? They won two games in a row. Why am I singing the Notre Dame song? Oh, that's right. I went to the game. Um, yeah, I went to the Notre Dame game, everybody. That's a bucket list thing. I can just, uh, I can just knock that right off. Now, where the fuck is all my, my notes here? I had all the subjects I wanted to talk about. What the fuck is this? Oh, for God's sakes. Why does this... I, You know what it is? I always have 50 fucking windows open. Let's close this one. Let's close this one. Look at it. It's a fucking enigma. Where, where did it go? Where does the window go? Now you won't go up? Is this it? Is this it? Come on. There it is. All right. Beautiful. Um. Anyways, what was I talking about? I want you to know the Notre Dame game, man. What a fucking game. There was absolutely no defense. And you know what? I finally broke the curse. I'm no longer a jinx. The home team won. Congratulations to Notre Dame. Um, my God, it was crazy walking that campus. It was really weird. I walked that, Last time I walked that campus was like I was a freshman in high school. And I was out here visiting uh, family. And we went down to go look at it, and I was all excited to see the stadium and uh, thinking that I was actually going to get grades good enough to go there, and I was going to go to law school and become a lawyer. And uh, that was like 30 fucking years ago. To come back 30 years later, dude, it was more than 30 years ago. It was like around 83, 84. God, I'm an old motherfucker. Now it's 2015. And to come back drunk as a stand-up comedian you know walking that campus just thinking what the fuck happened just thinking of all the shit that happened to me since then i remember i was walking you know hammered of course and uh laughing as i was walking the campus and i went you kind of took a different route there billy boy this family of sober people just kind of looked over at me and I was just like, hey, you know, I'm going down memory lane here, a little shit faced. Cut me some slack. Last time I was here, Ronnie Reagan was still alive and he was eating jelly beans, right? Blaming everything on Ollie North. Um, all right. The Jesus Christ, what a fucking game. We saw a game where there was over a thousand yards offense. So there was absolutely no defense. And I got to tell you something, I get so fucking livid at fans from the other team 
at home games of teams that I have no, I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't give a shit. There was two USC fans that were driving me nuts. There was one Samoan looking dude. I was calling him Mosi Tatupu. Any Patriot fans? You remember that? He probably wasn't even Samoan. Remember Mosi's Mooses? And you'd be in the, the fucking end zone. M O S I Mosi. He's a fucking incredible player for the Patriots. Like all Samoans are. You know? USC, for some reason, they had the lock on Samoan players, and they realized that these guys are like, they're like, they're not even good players. They're like Hall of Fame players. For some reason, they were the only ones that were drafting them. Or going out there and flying out and talking to their mothers, lying to them, saying your kid's going to make the fucking NFL and we're going to fucking fix up your fucking house out here, whatever the fuck they tell these goddamn kids. Um, so he was doing that shit, and every time, you know, Notre Dame, first play, like, throws a fucking 70-yard bomb for a touchdown, and he does that stupid thing, you know, where you, your team just got scored on, and then you sit there nodding, like, okay, okay, like, we can handle this, we can handle this, and you want to be like, excuse me, sir, you're not on the team, what are you nodding for? And then there was this fucking old white guy with the most faded fucking USC jacket and hat, so you could tell he was a fucking real fan who sat out there in the L.A. Coliseum. I mean, it was like sun-damaged clothes that he was wearing. It was just like his skin. You know, white people will wear shit till it's fallen off our fucking bodies. You know what I mean? I'm telling you. We're fucking, I don't know what we are. We're sentimental and cheap. We don't fucking put lotion on our faces. Our faces is all, are all fucking sun-damaged. This guy was a mess, man. This guy looked like a fucking Dust Bowl farmer. And you know he was from L.A., Right? One of those douchebags. And they both bonded and they kept high fiving each other and they were fucking annoying me. And I was sitting there going, Why am I so mad that these USC fans are USC fans? I just hate it when the other team's fans come in and they take over the fucking stadium. But what I was psyched about was we were sitting around all Notre Dame fans, except for this one USC douche who showed up in the third quarter with his girlfriend wearing this like camel hair coat, it almost seemed, with a scarf draped over it. And he was just such a fuck. I, I, he was such a douche. He was such a douche. You had to like respect it. Um, he just looked like that guy you were going to see on American Greed when he was in his fifties. Just complete sociopath. Completely entitled. The whole fucking thing. Like you know, they have that expression. He's a comics comic. You know, a musician's musician. This kid, we were joking, was. He was like the douche's douche. Like douchebags would have looked at him like, oh, look, at he's fucking crushing it. Just in, at one point, my favorite part of the game, because, you know, he was a USC fan. I heard him talking all douchey and loudly. And Notre Dame was down on the goal line. They stacked like three receivers on one side. And he's just like, look at that formation. Why would they stick all those guys there? Then, of course, Notre Dame runs it up the middle for a touchdown. And I just turn around, look at him. I said, oh, it's because it clears out the middle. And he's like, oh, we're not even good this year. That's what he said. Oh, he just wanted to fucking choke him, right? This goddamn scarf. And listening to him losing faith. Like, I just want to, I, I, the old me when it actually got into it with him. Being like, dude, why are you cheering this? He showed up in the fucking third quarter. But, you know, he'd probably been like, oh, that's because I spent the first two quarters in the press box. My last name is Trojan. My dad owns the university. You know, he's one of these fucking cunts. You know, but of course, you know, it was with a good looking girlfriend. She does. She's at that age. You know what I mean? She's going to hit your wagon to that. She's, she's with a fucking absolute sweetheart. God, that's got to suck, man. If you have a daughter, right? And she just marries a douche. You know, the two, first of all, you don't want her, you don't want her to be hanging around some fucking pussy hound either because you're like all right this guy's gonna cheat on her break her fucking heart blah 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 give her a fucking std and then you got the other thing if he just marries a douche you know you got that weird feeling where like okay at least she'll be taken care of because you know he has money because he's a douche and doesn't care about things and would pour shit in the water supply if it got him another scarf in life all right so you want him to come home with like a fucking you want her to come home with a uh, with a fucking uh i don't know with like a nice guy, but then you meet him, he's a nice guy, and then somewhere you're going to resent that, kind of be like, this guy's too fucking nice to really go out and make it, you know? You're just going to accept things, you know, and make pumpkin bread. And <laughs> I'm a fucking.
fucking idiot. All right, let me just let me just plow ahead here. Let's get to the questions. Oh, by the way, I saw a movie on the plane ride out here, a movie that I wanted to see. Uh, there was a movie uh, called Dope that came out, I think, last year. It's fucking brilliant. It's such a great movie. And the performances in it and the way it's written, um, the whole thing wire to wire was just done so perfectly. Uh, it's one of the best movies I saw. I was riding out with my buddy. We were on the same flight, and um, we got another passenger to switch, so we were fucking hanging and drinking on the way out to go to this fucking game. We just had the best fucking time. And uh, I started watching that movie, and within like five minutes, I'm really fucking giving him the elbow going, dude, you got to put this fucking movie on. And um, just the whole way that they executed the thing was phenomenal um so definitely check it out you're like what's it about it's about uh a kid who lives in the inner city and he's not in a gang and he sucks at sports and he's a fucking nerd he's a total fucking geek it's the kind of basically black kid that they ne really never put in movies you know what i mean because it's like the other two are exciting are living exciting lives like when you're in a gang there's life and death shit going on and then you know if you're fucking playing in sports you know what i mean that's like uh you know three two one you're gonna have that whole movie thing going and sad to say those are the two fucking kinds of like black guys that they put on tv they in gangs on cops and then on tv crushing your team's hopes and dreams that's it they they never show the fucking nerds that are down there that enjoy books and want to go to college and want to get the fuck out of there so not only that is it an original thing like oh this part of the city and they're going to do this this feels new it's actually socially a great thing to show there i'm off my fucking tree stump it's a fucking great movie all right let's plow ahead here um, so the Cubbies are down 2-0. Toronto is down 2-0. Um, there's this weird thing that, you know, if the Cubs are in, in the World Series, um, I'm going to be in Chicago at that time doing three nights, three nights of shows, and my agent was already worried going, dude, that city is going to fucking shut down. So there's a possibility we'd have to move the the, the shows later or, you know who knows what the deal's going to be we have to accommodate the people of chicago so i'm like i don't give a fuck move the game. move it later i don't give a shit i'll scalp a ticket and go to the game and he goes all right done deal so i actually really like the mets this year because uh one of the guys i work with on f is for family sweetheart of a guy is a big mets fan he's a fucking diehard mets fan and when it looked like the mets were shit in the bed he had this happy-go-lucky attitude about it going like, you know, because he actually got me into it. Like back in August, I go to the Mets win last night, and he just laughs. He goes, no, nope, we lost again. I go, oh, I'm sorry. He goes, yeah, we're going to blow it. We're going to blow it. I go, you still going to watch? So he goes, yep, going to watch every game. So just seeing a true fan like that, it kind of got me on the fucking bandwagon. Um, but I also love the Cubs, too. I actually, for some reason, it makes no sense as a Boston fan. I kind of really like the Mets, too. But I also, you know, the Cubs. you got to root for the Cubs. Being a Red Sox fan, solidarity. They're going through a curse. I want to see them win, right? Get that monkey off the back. As much as I can't stand people who wave hankies during fucking games, I give you a pass if you're a Steelers fan because they came up with it. The terrible towel, you know? For the love of God, can you be a fucking sports fan and put your hanky down? standing up waving that thing the people behind you can't see it's the playoffs playoffs people want to see it um all right let's read some fucking questions here for the week uh yeah the playoffs come around all the douches come out with the fucking noisemakers and the hankies and the signs get out of the fucking way there's a reason why there's stadium seating it's so the person behind you can see you start standing up flailing your fucking arms around trying to get on tv the rally monkey. Ugh. All right. Halloween movies. Um, hey there, Billy on Elm Street. Um, I would have gone with Nightbur on Elm Street. 
Uh, are you into horror movies? I've heard every podcast, and I'm not sure you've ever talked about it. Uh, what movie scared you as a kid? Uh, there was a movie where this fucking maniac, this chick was skating. I've, I've talked about this before. She was figure skating, and then all of a sudden, this fucking hockey playing Jason. They just show him skating in slow motion with his big Muppet shoes. Right? That was the funny thing. They couldn't give him, like, I don't think they gave him real skates because it would have seemed too fucking normal. He still had on his Frankenstein shoes with blades underneath it. Starts fucking skating. Look like the Muppets on ice, but then you see he has, an, like, a sickle. Starts skating towards this fucking lady, and he pulls out the fucking, this sickle. And she's got the stupid chick figure skates, right? Where you can only do that fucking scissor run. You know what I mean? You can't do the fucking hockey thing. It's so fucking hilarious to me that they gave chicks that. You know, you'd figure that fact that, especially back in the day, you know what I mean? Where so many sexual assaults were like, well, what were you wearing? You were asking for it. You'd figure that they'd give the women the better skates. So then the fucking rapist guys would, you know, would have to do that fucking figure skate and scissor thing to try to catch them as they fucking would fly up the ice and they'd get away. You know? It's a travesty. That one scared me on the first night, uh, um, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, part one and two were scary. And then once it went into 3D, kind of went off the rails. Um, Dark Night of the Scarecrow scared the fuck out of me. Old school ones. Um, there was an old uh, Sesame Street one that scared me where they were trying to teach you about the number one or being alone or something. They don't show it anymore because it scared the fuck out of me. And years later, I talked to my younger brother about it and said it scared the fuck out of him too. So I imagine somebody wrote to the show saying it was freaking kids out. He starts the song and he's on the piano and he's singing. And there was like three other Muppets there. And by the end of it, he was all by himself and he was running around going, Hey, where'd everybody go? And he couldn't figure out how to get out. It fucking scared the shit. I don't know what the fuck it was. The age I was at, it was that whole thought of being alone and not near your parents. I was just old enough to understand that I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I couldn't drive a car and that uh, I'd never see anybody that I knew anymore. And what the fuck, it was like one of the most terrifying things. All right. So I went to Sesame Street there. Um, anyways, he said, what movie scared you as an adult? Anything you, you can tolerate as an adult? My personal favorite was The Omen. What was the one where the guy fell under the ice and they were digging at the ice as he fucking went by? That one scared me. Dude, the Blair Witch scared the shit out of me. I saw that by myself, the midnight showing. I totally buy in when I go to scary movies. Uh, the Ring scared the fuck out of me. I found the American one more scarier than the, the, the Japanese one. Um, and some of that shit over there, the, the audition. Do you ever see that one? Old Boy. Did you see that one? Bobby Lee told me to go see those two. Bobby Lee knows all about those fucking things. And yes, it is because he's Asian and he is a movie star. And you combine the two of those and he's going to give you some great fucking movies. Um, yeah, I, I'm one of those guys that I buy into it. I hate people who go to scary movies and be like, that movie didn't even scare me. I was laughing through the whole thing. You know, like all of a sudden now they're like a war hero. It's like, yeah, you're at a movie. The whole time, if you've got a fucking movie, if you just start looking around at the movie theater, yeah, you're not going to be scared. But if you actually buy in, which is what you're supposed to do, you, you fucking actually have a good time, you cunt. All right. Um, Ex-girlfriend hinting at possible reunion. Oh, Jesus. Um, Ex-girlfriend hinting at possible reunion. Hey, Bill, love your podcast, even though I'm a lady and think you have no women fans. Oh, I assume this was a guy. Look at me being all heterosexual here. I'll just get right into it and say I've been having some lady problems. My ex-girlfriend, do you know how bad I want to have a beer with you and talk to a fucking woman about women problems just to hear that fucking perspective? You know, with your fucking insight being a woman, you know, what, what are your moves? How do you fucking walk through that minefield? She goes, my ex-girlfriend, whom I loved for a long time, and you used the word whom, I never know how to use that correctly. If anybody can send me something, I've read it on, you know, I, I know how to use your and your, 
and two and two T double O. I know how to use those, right? But uh, a who and whom have always stumped me. My ex girlfriend, whom I'm just assuming you're using it correctly. I've loved for a long time. Keep saying she misses me and hinting at us getting back together, even though we've been broken up for like five years. It's one of those relationships that never seems to die. Not in the sense that we keep breaking up and getting back together. We've never done that. But that we can't just be like normal friends. There's there's always some underlying romantic feelings in our interactions. Yeah, it sounds like you guys had that sex vibe. You know what I mean? And then you're both relationship people, and next thing you know, you're hanging out, you're having great sex, and then next thing you know, you're in a relationship. And then you really realize, like, you know, we just sort of fucked each other's brains out. But other than that, there was nothing else there. But then every time you run into each other, there's still that, hey, we can uh, go fuck each other's brains out, that you can fuse for the spark of love. That's what I'm guessing so far. Anyways, in case you're not familiar with it, this is typical lesbian drama. I, I didn't realize that. But it makes sense. You got the same hardware. You know how the engine runs. That you would probably... I would think that you guys were all fucking crushing it out there, right? Anyways, it's widely believed that we just can't let go. She had a girlfriend up until a few days ago, but kept flirting with me even when they broke up. Well, she's a piece of shit then. You can't get with her. You can't. She's fucking around on this other broad, right? Now she keeps saying stuff like, what do you think it's going to be like when we're old and married? Oh, God. And she goes, oh, I forgot. You don't. Oh, she goes, oh, and I forgot you don't want to get married. I'm okay with us just living together. I don't know if she's kidding or what, so I just try to dodge it by saying stuff like, I don't know, maybe I'll be dead by then. Yeah, exactly. She's getting in your fucking head. I neither confirm nor reject the idea of us getting back together. I just let her run with it. I'm not even sure why she's doing this. Um, she wants to talk to me all the time now, and I'm thinking maybe she's needy and has been f- and has been for some time since her relationship wasn't going that well. That's what I would guess. And I'm just a safe target for her to throw her emotions at and get something back. There you go. There you go. I agree with all of that. But then she talked about how she will never love anyone as much as she loved me. And when I asked her if she still loves me, she said yes. Oh, uh, you know what? Can I ask you a question? Do you love her? Were you thinking? Of, were you even thinking about this broad until she got back into your fucking life? She's going to fucking turn you all around oh god let me read the rest of this but i don't know what kind of love and what she wants with me if she's serious or just having fun i'm not going to say i've never thought about it but i'm not sure if i'd ever go back to that relationship we broke up for a reason and even though there's still something there it seems like a huge step backward in a way well there's your answer what the hell does she want bill she wants your fucking clamp she wants to nuzzle up next to you and have somebody watch a movie with and fuck around with again until she can fucking drive you nuts and you got to go through the emotional drama again. And why now? You already answered the question because she's recently single and she's lonely. Thanks for your time and your free podcast. Uh, lesbophobic grandmother. Oh, that's the next question. I thought, tell you, you signed it. I'm like, wait a minute, you're a grandmother and you're afraid of lesbians? You are a lesbian. What are the odds that was going to be the next one? Sorry about that. Um, I would say, uh, yeah, I would not get back involved with her. Fuck that. Fuck that. You're still young. Go get yourself some hot piece that fucking is into you. So it can be exciting and new. Come aboard. We're two lesbians. Let's hang out. And wear our shackets together, please. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. I would move on. Oh, what? She wants you now because she's recently single? Fuck that. She's using you. All right? You're better than that. You're better than that. Fuck that. And don't give in to the fact, you know, just the way this whole thing's written, I feel like you're a, you're a better person and that you actually have more genuine feelings. You know what I mean? Which means you're going to be more vulnerable and easier prey. And I think she's coming in, you know, She's basically the lesbian version of the dude that sat behind me during the USC game. The douche is douche. She's like the lesbian's cunt. You know, does that make any sense? Probably doesn't, but I'm looking out for you here. I would say do not get back together with her. 
All right. Especially over the holidays, you know, that Wednesday before Thanksgiving, when you just want to go out and go to that place, you know, basically the lesbian cheers. Sometimes you want to go, right? Everybody knows your name and she's going to be sitting in there drinking some sort of pumpkin beer, you know, comes walking up to you wearing her dickies. Hey, you don't need that shit. Fuck that. Go talk to that younger hottie in the sundress. Do yourself a, you know, treat yourself this holiday season. Get yourself a younger hottie in a sundress. All right, lesbophobic grandmother. Uh, dear Billy Ballbuster, before I get to what I want to talk about, I just want to say that I'm a big dude, and you, sir, have inspired me to lose weight. Good man. Since April 3rd, I've been working out almost every day and have lost 35 pounds. So thank you for that, Bill. You're a legend. Dude, you're a legend. That's fucking tremendous. That's what you got to do. Go to the gym every day. My big thing is I'm on the road for two weeks here. So, you know, um, I've actually stayed on my gym schedule. I went to, to the gym the first day. Second day was my day off. And now the next three days in a row, I do three on one day off. So uh, I'm doing my podcast and we're driving down to Cincinnati. So when I get to Cincinnati, um, you know, it's not a long drive. So I'm going to I'm going to do the old treadmill. Hopefully they'll have a pull up bar or something there. Um, so I can do my pull-ups and that type of shit. Um, cause I have a bet with Paul Verzi that when I'm 70, I'm going to be able to do 10 of those fucking things. I was actually thinking the other day, if I could pat myself on the back as I was on my pegboard in my garage, which I have the long skinny one that I actually hung sideways. So I just go along the thing sideways because you know, you need like fucking, <laughs> you need like a fucking, you know, 10, 10 foot ceiling probably 11 with the size of my head to go up a pegboard and have the headroom to get up to the top and i didn't want to hang it lower and start you know with my fucking basically on my knees for for whatever reason i didn't want to do that um and i was going across the pegboard and i was actually thinking at some point going dude i'm 47 years old going across the pegboard at some point i gotta be impressed that's pretty impressive um and after burke kreischer gave me that that men's health thing to increase your grip strength that really helped me on the fucking pegboard um and also my technique i held you know when you you hold it you got to have it your your basic your forearms almost touching your bicep and you got to have it and then the rest of your arm is basically right on your side you got to get in close um so you got more leverage i was almost i had my arm too far away from my chest and i, I couldn't do it um so anyways he goes a few years back my parents got divorced after 17 years of a bad marriage. What put the final nail in the coffin was my mother's secret relationship with another lady who is now her girlfriend, who I'll call Kate for the sake of this email. Kate with a K, not with a C, like old Bruce there. She has since moved in with us, which sounds weird, but my brother, sister, and I all have a great relationship with Kate. Um, also, I wasn't It wasn't just something my... Oh, my God. Can you imagine that poor bastard? What a mind fuck that is. Dude, if you're in a relationship, okay, and it ends, and it turns out the other person's gay, I mean, you have to be sitting there going, this person never loved me. I just wasted my fucking life. And then on top of that, your family bonds with the new fucking lover it, it just that's just a double mind fuck like is there any sympathy for me what the fuck i'm going through i legitimately love this fucking woman wow anyway she has since moved in with us which sounds weird my brothers and sisters and i have a great relationship with kate well that's i mean yeah that's good that's actually progressive also it wasn't just something my mom Uh, Also, it wasn't just something my mom just drove into in spite of my dad. My mom and Kate really do love each other, and they have three strong years together to back that up. Dude, you got any sympathy for your dad? Uh, Here's the problem. My grandmother has grown farther and farther apart from my mother ever since she turned lesbian. Turned lesbian. No, dude, she she was always there. Uh, She pretty much hates Kate. Dude, by the way, you can't turn gay. You're gay. You know what I mean? You just, you're fucking gay. It's like, did you turn heterosexual? 
Was it a decision you made, you know, at like four or five fucking years of age? The first time, that's the first time I remember. I, I always tell this fucking story whenever somebody says turn gay. It's like you are what you are. I remember I was laying on the floor. They had this giant rug when I was in kindergarten. And this girl asked to get up and go to the bathroom. She could go to the bathroom. And I was laying there playing with some fucking toy, you know, holding it up like a little kid does. And she, when she walked by me, she walked by close enough that I could see up her skirt to see her five-year-old thigh, which sounds weird, but I was five, so I was crushing it, right? And when I saw it, you know, I felt like this fucking jolt in my heart. And I remember I sat up and I just turned around and stared at her as she walked out like, what the fuck was that? You know, there wasn't a decision made. So I imagine if you were gay... Right? Am I really going to talk about five-year-old balls? I can't do that. Um, yeah, it's basically the same thing. But to say that you turned gay would mean that you also turned heterosexual, which means at some point you were sitting there, and you know, metaphorically or hypothetically, whatever the proper word is, there was a dick and a pussy on the table, and you were going, eeny, meeny, my, let's see. What are we going to choose here? Let's weigh the options. You didn't. You were just straight. All right? Anyways, so she pretty much hates Kate, and she believes she has perverted my mom. Uh, she won't even so much as come over for a meal, and I can barely mention Kate around her. Mind you, my grandmother lives only nine houses down from us. Here's my question. Is there any way to make my grandmother more accepting of my mother, Kate, my mother and Kate? Her option hasn't budged in three years, and I'd love for her to at least be cordial. Your infinite and hilarious wisdom will be greatly appreciated. Thanks, and go fuck yourself. Um... No, I'm sorry. I usually offer a ray of light. There isn't. There isn't. This is going to be one of these deathbed things that she's going to have to fucking do. There just, there isn't. Um, when somebody feels that way, feels that strongly, um, all I can say is just keep inviting her to stuff. Maybe eventually she'll come around. I was surprised that in all of this, she didn't have any, nothing about your dad. And the shit that he had to go through. I mean, that's fucking unbelievable. You know, they actually did an article about that, you know, when when Bruce became Kate, you know, and they were going, oh, my God, isn't this amazing? This is fucking, you know, and the fourth line gets the 4th of July because everybody was so afraid to be on the wrong side of that issue that all of a sudden, you know, they'd lose their advertising and then they couldn't make their mortgages. That's what most of that reaction was about, I felt, was about, you know, cover your ass Let's get out in front of this story and show how much we, uh, you know, we are accepting of this. Or like that pieces of shit ESPN. Let's ignore a woman dying of cancer who's still playing basketball. And let's make fucking Kate the sportsman of the year so that we get the exclusive interview with her. Fucking pieces of shit. Um, anyways. The fuck am I going with this? Like they actually did this article an informed article on it that wasn't homophobic but actually talked about the people that were married and the depression and devastation that they go through because they you know they lose that person you know what I mean like Bruce Jenner is gone and if you loved Bruce if you were in a fucking relationship you know with him like his wife was I mean all of a sudden just poof just fucking dis bad enough you go through a fucking it's almost like they died so i mean there is like a crazy thing there or if you have a relationship where all of a sudden there's nothing more definitive i think that if you, your partner never fucking loved you the way you loved them if not only do you go through a divorce that they then you find out that the whole time that they were gay. So it's just like, I, I would be going like, oh my God. So was I like grossing you out every time we had sex? I would be fucking devastated. So I was a little surprised you got nothing in there about your dad. I mean, he must be like, eh, fucker. <laughs> he must, he, is he crushing it? Maybe he's got some fucking young chick on the side. I have no idea, but I'm getting away from the, uh, the thing here. Um, I would say no, there's, there's no way when somebody's that walled off, and, you know, on one level, you just got to be accepting of your grandmother that, like, she grew up in a different time and her child brain was filled up with this shit. And, you know, it's it's fucking 
atrophied in there and there's nothing you can do about it but i don't know just keep coming over there. I, you know what i would do i would openly joking i would openly joke about it in front of her to loosen her up you know uh, that's what i would do i just remember when we remember that guy that old guy that lived beneath me the last time when i had the apartment way back in the day and he used to always yell at my wife through the floors and he was a fucking asshole we just started being overly nice to him my wife started whistling at him like he was a good looking guy and we fucking basically wore the guy down and at some point you know you know before the dementia set in and he totally went fucking crazy you know was standing out on the fucking porch with just a t-shirt on that was a hell of a sight Uh, (laughs) i would just openly joke about it um I would just be like, uh, I would start calling her Kate that you hate. That's what I would do. Hey, my mom and Kate that you hate is going down to the store. Hey, you know Katie that you hate? Yeah, they're going uh, They're going to go to the movies. They're probably holding hands right now, Grandma. They're holding hands, Grandma. Like, I would just do that. I'd be like, come on, Grandma. There was never one, you know. You never had one half a second gay moment. You know, there was just one girl. I don't know what she did. You're just admiring her beauty and you, I don't know. Maybe you just wanted to kiss her on her shoulder and just try to gross her out. And just, yeah, I'm just I would, I would, you know what? I would break her balls about it. Every time I saw her, I would do that in the beginning and then I would talk to her about whatever I wanted to talk about. That's what I would do and see if he could. And then I would tell Kate that that's what I'm doing. And then when Kate was there, I'd be like, hey, Grandma, there's Kate that you hate. Oh, Haiti, Katie, there she is. Look at her. You know, as much as you hate her, you got to admit this is a hell of a meatloaf sandwich. Granted, you know, you don't want to know where this fi- those fingers were when you were, she was making it. <laughs> don't don't take it that far. I'm sorry, I had to get out of it with a joke. Um, all right, girlfriend uh, fucked a yoga instructor. Hey, old Billy Bald Tits, how the fuck are you? Uh, I'm writing you because I need some advice. I just recently found out my girlfriend of two years has done some fucked up shit. Up until now, I thought she was marriage material. She's not like the Kardashian wannabes of today. She and I have so much in common. We always laugh and I love hanging out with her. No red lights, no red flags, you mean, have been triggered until now. Uh, she doesn't drink like crazy. She doesn't take off her heels and walk home. <laughs> she's not a quitter. Overall, she's awesome. But recently, I found out from a mutual friend that before she met me, she had a secret affair with her yoga instructor. And that's not even the fucked up part. The yoga instructor is also her best friend's dad. What? What? Okay, her best friend's dad, and she never told her best friend. Oh, my God. So that yoga instructor fucked his daughter's best friend? Dude, that is such yoga instructor behavior. Dude, I'm telling you right now, in another fucking life, I would have been a yoga instructor. Dude, those guys fucking crush it like nobody. Dude, hot chicks, they all fucking do yoga, right? Because they want to stay in shape, but they don't want to get all fucking bulked up. They want to keep that sinewy type muscle, right? They want to be all tone, but still look good in a fucking dress, right? So he, he, it's like the Pied Piper. They just come to you, and you get them all stretched out before you fuck them. And then you can have your whole new agey, blah, blah, blah. Dude, they, I'm telling you right now, take a yoga fucking class one time in your life. And you know who the yoga instructor wants to bang. It's the one they always go over and they adjust them and they put their hands on them, you know? You know what I mean? And they get the, the, the woman gets to feel their fucking touch and they're all fucking open because they're fucking in this head space. Like the whole, the, the fucking vibe is, it's, it's a layup. You know what's funny? I used to take this fucking yoga class and this guy was like crushing it. And for some reason, I was always doing the positions correctly. He never had to adjust me. But the fucking chick next to me who was already totally stretchy and could put her foot up her own goddamn clam, for some reason, he always had to fucking adjust her with their spaghetti straps. Huh? Fucking hilarious. 
Ah, oh, you got to love a piece of shit yoga instructor. I, I fucking, oh, they're such dirtbags. And the whole time they're talking about all this new agey stuff, you know? Just be, man. You can't fight it, you know? Just fucking give in to my dick. Um, anyways, he said they fucked for a few months before she met me and came clean to telling me uh, that it was true, but she regrets it. What the fuck do I do? I'm young. I'm only 22, but I feel like I have really found some someone in her. But I feel like I can't trust someone who would be that deceitful. Should I move on or assume something like this won't happen in the future? Thanks a million, and as always, go fuck yourself. Well, those are two really great questions. Um, you know, in defense of her, she's really young. And I'm assuming that fucking guy is at least in his 40s. And what he did was barely legal. You know? Dude, that guy fucking spit 20 years a game at her in a yoga class. I mean, it's a fucking layup. Um, but also, she did fuck a guy. She did fuck her friend's dad. So... If she's the way that you say, where she's this really wholesome, innocent type person, those people are also, you know, the kinds of people that end up in the trunk of serial killers' cars. I hate to say it because they are so fucking innocent and that type of shit. So, you know, this guy's basically Jason, except instead of an axe, he's using his dick. I mean, that's just fuck. I mean, that's fucking. Oh my god, I can't imagine doing that. I can't fucking. Um, can you imagine? Right after you bust a nut and you're, you're thinking clearly again what the fuck you just did. And you know women are so fucking emotional, right? Jesus Christ, like, and they just have to talk. You never rob a bank with a woman. I mean, you're caught before it's even started. And then you do something like that. And then, oh my God, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. And she goes out and has a couple of fucking lady drinks. And the whole fucking town knows. Oh, my God. And then your daughter is going to hate you for life. Your marriage is fucking over. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. Jeez, that guy, he might as well stuck his dick in a beehive. Son of a bitch got away with it because he's a fucking yoga instructor, man. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would just really come clean to her and I would just sit down and say, listen. Um, just tell her all these great things that you feel about her. But the, f the fact that she did it, did that, you just need to talk about it more. Like, just ask, walk her way through it. Like, why do you think you did that? Just don't accuse her. Don't be like, don't be having an accusatory tone. Don't be judging her, even though you are. Um... I think the jury's still out on that because she's so fucking young and that piece of shit is so fucking old. Um, he really took advantage of her. I don't give, I know it's fucking legal, but to me in my head, like, yeah, you're a fucking pervert if you do something like that. Uh, I'm judging the guy. I mean, she was 21, 22 when he did it, but that, 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 that's not fucking right. That's, that's not fucking right. You know, um, Jesus fucking Christ. I've seen pornos with a more wholesome storyline than that, you know? Um, no, I would just ask her about it. And just, why do, you, why do you do that? Why did you do that? Why, why do you think that you did it? I would help her get through it in a therapy way and just by her answers, if, uh, you know, if that's like what she's into, then I would have some concerns that she would act out again. Um, uh, I don't know. I would, I, but I, but if you love her, you really got to sit down in a non -judge, judgmental way. And by the way, dude, you're telling me you haven't stuck your dick in some place that would give her a little, some fucking red flags. You never did anything filthy, you know? I mean, I'm assuming you did. Why don't you be fair and kind of, it's this weird thing where like you should be before you marry somebody, you, sh you, you have to. You got to judge them. You don't just walk into it blindly. You're agreeing to spend your life with somebody. You, you got to judge them harshly. But um, 
she already feels bad about it. You know, you don't want to hurt her, but I, there's, there's a way more of like a therapy kind of way. You could just ask her like, why, why do you think that you did that? And if she goes, well, why are you still asking me about it? Which she might, she might get defensive. I would just say, I, I don't know, because I, it's, it concerns me. That's a bad answer. What do you mean it concerns you? Don't judge me. Oh, Jesus, dude. This is going to be like dismantling a bomb. I just, I mean, it's a hell of a story. Like, how did you keep that a secret? How did you feel about that? She probably needed to get it off her fucking chest. I think the fact that she had to admit it to you shows that she's not a complete sociopath. You know, I don't know. Let me know how that one goes. I gave you the best advice I could. All right. Uh, Buy Curious Girlfriend. Jesus, this is like the Red Shoe Diaries this fucking week, huh? Um, hey, Bill, recently I found out that my girlfriend, who I've been uh, with for a year now, has been searching on the Internet for naked girls and porn with hot girls as I was on her phone. In front of her, not snooping. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you weren't snooping. This was, of course, news to me, and I confronted her about it, which ended up in her being embarrassed and upset. She promised me that she's never been interested in girls in that way. However, she told me that she does find girls attractive. Dude, what is the fucking problem? I love this girl, and she makes me very happy. This worried me because even though I am confident, young, and good-looking male, it made me feel insecure about myself and feel that I'm not enough for her. Well, that's very honest. Um, love the podcast, especially the Vice videos, as I usually agree with your outlook on different situations. So just wanted to see what you thought about my situation. Should I be concerned or should I just forget about it and continue to be happy with it? Thanks to go fuck yourself. Well, there's a number of ways that you can go with this. You can either break up with her and then you're not with her. You can uh, drive her to indulge in this uh, attraction and then get yourself a threesome out of it but you're probably going to fuck up the relationship because it never fucking works once you have that open fucking thing and then we have rules i have to be there and then eventually you won't be there and then it'll be fucking weird and there'll be three people in the room when you have the breakup talk um i don't know dude i'm i'm really big on not like judging people like you know when it comes to that type of stuff like the sex stuff and the shit that they're fucking into, because I still think we're just scratching the surface of, um, of all the shit. Like, I don't think we even understand it at this point. So I think it's perfectly okay. If she's into that type of thing, I actually think it's kind of cool. And, um, no, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, there's no reason to feel in, insecure. You know what I mean? Think about the porn that you've watched this de- you definitely got something in your sexual fucking closet that she doesn't fucking know about. You know what I mean? Something that you're into. You're into like older chicks. So who the fuck knows what, right? <laughs> who the fuck knows? I, 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 th- I think like to really have a great relationship, you kind of you just got to accept. The- There's that fine line where you, you have to know what you're willing to accept and what you're not willing to accept. You got to know where that line is. When you're young, I think you're still learning that. So that's why you're writing me. Just figure out where that line is. And if the person's on this side of that line, then you just have to be totally accepting of them. Um, And once they know that, they can relax and you have a great fucking relationship, you know. Um, Not to toot my own horn, but I have a great relationship with my wife. And, uh, And part of it is because we do that with each other. Like she, you know... She accepts me for the fucking lunatic that I am. And I am a fucking lunatic. Um, like, I don't, it's the weird thing of me getting with her is I realized how fucking nuts I am. And I don't mean like, hey, I'm a crazy guy. I like to drink beer and smoke cigars. I mean, like, there's something fucking a little off about me. And uh, she accepts it. She doesn't give a fuck. You know, on the surface, I'm a great guy. I'm sitting there making pumpkin bread, you know. Working my ass off, bringing home money, but uh, the, underneath there, like I'm a fucking, I'm a, I'm a lunatic, and uh, I'm such a psycho that I'm only just now realizing it. And I can't even, I can't even like verbalize what it is about me that makes me a fucking, uh, 
I, I don't know. Like I, I'm unbelievably, I don't know. I'm an antisocial son of a bitch. I will tell you that right now. Do you know I'm sitting in a hotel room right now with a TV that does not get proper reception on a football Sunday. Yesterday, I could not get proper reception for the games. And rather, and I just shut the TV off because I'd rather miss the fucking football games than to call down to the front desk and have to socially deal with somebody coming in here and fixing the TV. I just don't want him in here. And while he was fixing the TV, I would be sitting there. I talked about this last night, thinking like, what if I just took my laptop and just smashed him over the fucking head repeatedly right now? You know, I just think shit like that. (laughs) I wouldn't do it, but that's what I would be thinking. And the whole time he's helping me, every time he would talk, I would just be in a hostile way thinking, shut your fucking mouth. And that's just one of those ticks that I have. And she accepts me. Um, oh, I didn't read the last bit of the advertising here. Oh, by the way, thanks to everybody that came out um, to the show last night in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, looking forward to Cincinnati. Going to try to get some fucking ribs when I'm down there. That's what they're known for. Um, All righty, that's the podcast for this week. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Anything Better podcast, NFL edition, sponsored by BetMGM, and we're going into week number seven, everybody. And uh, before we get started, of course, we got to shout out the BetMGM uh, sports betting app. It's the best one out there, and you guys have been using it for a while. We've been loving it for a while. All you have to do, guys, is go to the BetMGM app, download it, and use the Anything Better bonus code, which is BURR. Uh, 200. B-U-R-R 200. Here's how it works. All you got to do for our promo, you put in $10, a minimum of $10, okay? And you place a qualifying bet and then you will get $200, guys. $200 in bets regardless of the outcome of your bet. So you just got to put $10 in, you get up to $200. Please bet responsibly, have fun with it. They also have a survivor pool still going where you just pick the team, not against the spread, just the team. And as long as that team wins, you keep going every week to get prizes at the end of the season. Uh, Bill and I had a good week. We ended up, uh, Bill. I mean, Steady Eddie over there. I mean, Bill's just. Oh, yeah. Oh, Billy, win some, lose some. (laughs) Oh, Billy, what are you going to do? Two and two. I've been two and two every single week this year, except for one where I went three and one. So I am two games above 500. Uh, Check out my new piano, Paul. I got there in the corner. You like that? Beautiful. Taking some piano lessons, and we had New England Brickmaster coming and do my fireplace. You like that? Uh, I love that, dude. Look at the stonework on that thing. You like that white couch? I mean, just I just sort of float around. I don't know why they put that beam in front of my front door, but you know, you get what you pay for, right? (laughs) I'm Sicilian. I saw the I saw the stonework and the white couch right out of the gate. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I went two and two again last week. So I am. I don't even know what I am. We were 20 weeks in. So six uh, weeks in, I must be 12 and eight. You are two games above. Oh, okay. Are you? I thought you were two no, games. not 12. Now I'm two games above. Whatever. So yeah, I am. I am 10 and no, 10. You are 14, 12. No, you are f- uh, 14 and 12. No, uh, I'm 12 and 12 now. No, so six means- is 24. Yeah. Oh, Paul, what am I? Jake, well, divide what? by two would be 12 and 12. I am. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm 13 and 11. Okay. 13 and 11. I Woo! am. I am 12 and 12. Yes, 13 and 11. Those 13 and 11. Uh, All right. You sound like you have fucking throat yeah. cancer. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I went three and one. And I am now even at 12 and 12 after 24 games. I had to crawl myself out of that hole. Paulie heats up this time of year. Paulie starts Uh, to see it. (laughs) There's a lot of of taking off of the headset in September and some heated, passionate conversations with his head coach by October. Right around mid-October, Paul gets on the same page and things start fucking clicking. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. I'm concentrating. (laughs) I got okay, it takes a little time. It hey, Paul, time. you've been sleeping with your picks. Been <laughs> sleeping with your picks here. Um, uh, what do you think about last week? Well, here's Dude, what I had I... a buddy of mine took the fucking Browns, had the Browns and the Jets straight up picking winners. That's impressive. Yeah. Having the Browns and Jets, especially with the Browns with the backup quarterback. But I'm going to tell you something, dude. 
Now, Bill, you know me. You know I don't mind if my team loses. And I love you. I'll be the I love you too. But I'll be the first to call you up and go, hey, we stink. Hey, we lost. I gotta tell you something, dude. Watching the Giants lose Monday night on a game that not only did they completely outplay the the Buffalo Bills, the defense shut them out into the third quarter. And then to have the officials, and I know people are going to go, oh, Paul, they suck. What are you complaining about? They want, dude, you can't be in the end zone grabbing a guy like this, holding his arm down, and be upset that you'd have to throw it two times in a row, and that's what happened. Got me sick, ruined our season. If we win that game and we're two and four, we can salvage a season. Now we're one and five, and we're in big trouble. So that's what sucked. Other than that, it was an entertaining, entertaining week. And I got to tell you I something. I agree with all that, other than you being two and four. And then, like, you're going to just start turning shit around here. No, but two and four you're, going Your guy from Duke is fucking home. He's no, sick. He's hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. Yeah, That's he's... what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. But look. He's got 160 million reasons to be out on that fucking field where I'm sitting. I love those old guys that say that. Oh, if he were, if we're back in my day, a guy playing with a broken leg. It's like, all right. Hey, dead construction on the weekend. You know what working out was when I was a kid? Yeah, you had a second job. You didn't have concussions. The guy got his head hurt. He got back in a game. It's like, yeah, yeah. He fucking killed himself at the age of fucking 50 because he, wait, whoa. All right, Jesus, no. Paul, you went dark. You went dark yeah. there. I'm uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> what did you think of last week, Bill? Uh, I barely watched any of it. I had, um, my wife came back in town. I had come back. In town, what did I? No, no, it was my kid. My kid had a week off from school. So I was just like, oh, I'm nice. in dad mode. Oh, so I don't even remember what I did. I think we went miniature golfing. Oh, we went Billy to the playground. The <laughs> you, were, you went to an arcade, something, right? Oh, yeah. No, the arcade was there. Yeah. Dude, I took, uh, I took my daughter and one of her friends to go play miniature golf. And the other girl just was did not like miniature golf to the point she thought it was like stupid. It, I, I already love this girl. It was so funny. She was just sitting there looking at me. I was going, all right, go ahead, hit the ball, you know, with the, with the, with the club. And she was just like, I go, you know, you know, can I just hit it up the thing. She did it like one time. And then she was just bored. And she was like, every hole, she was like walking up to whatever you were hitting it into, like the windmill, seeing if you could go into it. And finally in the fourth hole, I'm like, sweetheart, you got to hit the ball and put it in the hole. And dude, she just looked at me, picked up the ball, walked over to the hole and dropped it in with her hand and just looked at me like, all right, can I go now? <laughs> Oh boy. Sounds like she's going to be trouble. <laughs> no, it was the exact opposite. She at her young age knew exactly what I knew. Golf is fucking stupid. She you wanted to go I play saw? arcades, a car arcade games. What do I want to do, Paul? Do I want to go kill some zombies? Or do I want to sit there with this stupid putter for 18 holes hitting it into a windmill? I already Listen. loved her. I loved her even more. I was dying laughing. No, no, that's I I did, after that. I was like, all right, you don't have to play. We're just going to get through these as quick as we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't mean to. I was just saying, I picture her fast forward. She's 25. A guy takes her to a restaurant. She see, looks around the restaurant, rolls her eyes. Oh, yeah. She's, she's not going to be for the week. <laughs> that's what yeah. I mean. If you're a dummy, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a quick meal. Who gets first pick this week, Bill? Uh, what, it's, it's, uh, it's, an, it's an odd week. It's an odd week. So that would be. I'm so kind you of an had... odd guy. You had first pick this year, so it's week seven. So it's you. I love how you and you're you trying to do the math. You forgot how to speak English. You go. You had first pick this year. <laughs> it's you. You go. You get first pick on odd hey, weeks. Hey, hey, Pauly. I, I I know when I'm supposed to go. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Paul, I'm gonna tell you something right now. I'm not gonna do it to you, but I like your Giants getting two and a half at home against the Commanders. I I do. I like you at home. I like you at fucking home. I like that it's a division rivalry. I like that you got fucked last week. I like that the commanders won. But you know something, Paul? I'm going to leave that there for you. No, no, All right? no. Take hey, no, no. Want. Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't talk. You owe me one. If, there, <laughs> if there's a week you like the Pats, you got to let me know. All right. I like the, uh, I don't know why this game just stuck out. I like the San Diego Superchargers plus five. And a half. They had a hot breaker again last week. But I just think, I don't know, KC's a little erratic. Division rivalry. Uh, Travis Selfie, that's what I call him now. You know, now that he's getting all this, this stuff here. He's out there. He's got this beautiful lady singing like a bird, right? And she's sick, right? He's sick. 
sick of playing football. He's not sick of fucking snuggling with her and that little piano bench built for two, is he? Oh, uh, no. Hey, write a song about me running in the flat. Travis. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to go with the Chargers. Getting five and a half. It's a great pick. Get your barbecue, Paul. That's a great pick because even if they lose that game, it'll be by three. I like them winning that game. You know something? Uh, the Giants were on my – I had a whole speech about how this was going to be the first week I'd take the Giants since the debacle of week one. And then I thought you were going to take it from me, which you absolutely could have. You absolutely could have. But you were a gentleman. Well, I wasn't raised that way. And you know something? I like the Patriots getting eight and a half this week, and I'm laying off them. So there you go. You can have there that. You, you can have that. You no, can have it. it. I'm not taking it. All right. Um, don't, 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 that don't, doesn't count then. No, no, it was, doesn't count as a favor. I see what you're trying to do. You're trying no, to no, pay me. You're trying to pay me back with funny money. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take the. I'm gonna take my New York. Hey, what, what is this? Giants. What half, half these fucking things don't even fit. What, what am I supposed to do with this? Huh? Hey, uh, stay off uh, that shit. That's what you. That was what the fuck. That was the Henry Hill. You came with the guns and the silencers right there. It's turning your mind into mush. He goes. I didn't say anything. Um, I'm gonna take the Giants getting three at home. They got fucked last week, but I really, really liked how the defensive line performed. And I like that Justin Pugh came off the couch and actually gave a little bit of a boost to our offensive line. Giants getting three against Washington at home. I could That's one I got to see. I'm taking the Giants. Okay. I like the, uh, I'll tell you, a game, Paul, a game that intrigues me that I just can't put a fucking finger on here. Browns, Colts. The line I have is minus three Browns. Uh, Deshaun Watson is out, though, but they played great last week. Am I crazy? My information bad. I'm going to stay away from that thing I because I have no idea with both of those teams who's showing up. All right? It's like dating an alcoholic on payday. They're going to come home? Be happy? They're going straight or... to the pub. Yeah. Uh, I like the uh, – I'll tell you what I like, Paul. Oh, I'll tell you what I like. I like the uh, the Phoenix Cardinals getting seven and a half in Seattle. And I'll tell you why, because I watched that kid that they have. Of course, I don't remember his name because I'm an old fella. Um, I like their defense, and I really like their quarterback, who's in there for uh, the fu- the fucking guy there. What's his name there? Uh, the, the the Dunkin' Donuts kid there. Who? Krispy Kreme. The guy I got the bet with you that he's going to balloon up and get fat. The oh, water uh, bug. Oh, oh, uh, got the coolest name. Not Kenyon Andy. Martin. He played for the <laughs> New Jersey Nets. Uh, no, Carmelo, no. No, I'm talking about the fucking quarterback for the. the oh, Cardinals. Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. Yeah, Kyler Murray. There you go. Thank you. I got to bet with Paul that if, at some point in his career, he's going to have a weight problem. <laughs> After it, when the Cardinals have a good season, Paul, he's going to get a little nuts, get a little sideways at a Buffalo White. He's got it in the face. He's one of those guys in shape, but if you look at his face, you know, you'd think he had a dad bod. He's got it yeah. in him. Yeah, he does. Little Bernard King. Bernard King blew Bernard out. King got fat? Oh, dude. But he's like 60-something. There's, there's a garden legend. All right, who do you got? All right, so wait, who'd you take? Uh, who did I just take? You took, I, the, Cardinals I took the Cardinals. I took plus, the Arizona Cardinals. Plus seven and a half. That's, plus seven uh, and a half. Oh, in Billy's Seattle. That. Oh, I like Billy's that. I like that. Guy. I like their quarterback. I like their defense. I like Geno Smith. But I just feel like you know they sort of sputter. They stay. They they go and they stop. I just don't I see them. Kidding. Kidding. Bill, who are you kidding? You like the point five? You know, you like the half a point? Who doesn't? Hey, Paul, you know, I'm an ass man. You know, you put a little more on the rear end there. I'm going to fucking look at it. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you know what? There's something comforting. When you put a little, when you pad the back, there's something a little comforting. There is. Uh, Here's some place to rest your arm when you have your arm around her waist. I love that. Um, Dude, I am really intrigued about tonight's game. And I usually don't like taking the Thursday game. Uh, And Trevor Lawrence is like a maybe to play. That's so the I, apocalypse now pick. Mow, uh, mow. Gun to your head, Paul. It's happening tonight. It's happening tonight, which is scary. It is. It's it's like it's it's in a couple hours. Um, Trevor Lawrence likely to play against the Saints. Are the Saints for real? I don't know. 
Uh, the Saints for I, real, they're fucking erratic. Am yeah, I nuts? They are. No, they are. They are. Oh boy, this 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 is a weird week for me. I'm gonna do it though. Why not? Why are you taking not? the Saints? No. Who are you I'm taking? I'm taking the fucking cats. I'm taking the Jacksonville Jaguars to go okay. in there tonight, getting two and a half. Okay. Trevor Lawrence a little banged up, but they're just gonna click. I've said all year that the Lions and Jags, this was their year. And so far, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going Thursday night. Oh, Paulie's going to have a W or a loss in the next few hours. Uh, coming you know, out swinging this week. I like jumping in the deep end. Uh, let's do it. I'm going to take the Jags plus two and a half tonight going in there as dogs. All right. Okay. And I like the Rams at home. Minus three against the Steelers. I think the Steelers are another erratic team. I think the Rams are kind of starting to put it together a little bit. They're both they're both scary teams. I just like that the Rams are at home. And I think in key positions, they're just a better team. And uh, the one thing about the fucking Steelers is all you got to do is beat them in the first half, and then you have the game because they do not change their game plan. They're like, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. So I like, uh, I like their coach, too, even if they have having a problem in the first half to come back and beat him by more than three. I'm taking the Rams at home. Minus three, Paul. Minus three, buddy. Minus three. Oh, Paul, you look shit. good. You look good. Everything all right? Family's okay? That's great. That's great. We, we got to get together. We got to get together, Paulie. All right, here's what I'm going to do. You know, you just don't call me as much. You know, it kind of hurts a little bit, but you know, it's all right. What? Um... <laughs> that bullshit neighborhood guilt even worked on you. You're like, what? I, yeah, I was like, hey, we talked yesterday. I talked. Hey, you know that guy down the street? I mean, across the country, he made me feel bad this morning, honey. <laughs> Don't you listen to him, Paul? He's just jealous of you. I'm gonna take a team that every time I take them, they're they're always right there. They they won one for me. They made me push once, and and they're playing a bad team. I'm gonna take the um. I'm gonna take the Las Vegas Raiders minus three against the hapless. Chicago Bears, who are one in five and erratic. Uh, and the Raiders are coming off a bye week, and they looked really good that that um on, on in prime time. Devontae Adams is now rested up after his shoulder. I'm gonna take them. They're That's a better good. team. I like that. They're a better team. I wouldn't say the Bears are erratic. They were they're pretty consistent, consistently <laughs> erratic. <laughs> hey, I got two teams down here. The spreads, I don't know who they're playing. Who the Eagles got and who do the Vikings have? So the Eagles have um the Eagles have the Dolphins. Both teams are five and one, and the Eagles are minus two and a half. At home? The Eagles are at home. And who are the Vikings playing? The Vikings are playing the 49ers, and the 49ers are six and a half point favorites. That's in Minnesota. I'll take the Vikings. I don't know why. Why am I going to take oh. the Vikings? I like that. Well, oh. 49ers coming off a fucking loss. I think everybody's going to bury the 49ers. Hey, you know what? I'm going with my gut this week. Paul, this might be my first losing week. You know what I mean? I don't know what by it is. Way, I'm, I'm just hanging in the there, way, Paul. By the way, let's talk about this for a second. That's sec. it. Those are my picks for this week, and now I hide. Bill, so you don't see the doubt in my eyes. Bill Burr going into week seven has not had a losing week, ladies and gentlemen. You want to talk about getting shot out of a cannon into an NFL season. That's pretty impressive, my friend, because I because I'm the opposite. Like you said, I'm either throwing haymakers and knocking the guy out or. or yeah, you're, you're Cor Corrales Castillo is the, the fight analogy I always use. Yeah, it's, it's that uh, or uh, Mickey uh, Ward Gotti. Any oh of those classic back and forth. This guy's going to win. No, this guy's going to win. Speaking uh, of that. I got to give a shout out. Sylvester Stallone's new documentary is coming out on Netflix. It looks unbelievable. What's it called? I mean, what's it called? It's going to be right on the first fucking page. I don't know. Hollywood legend. <laughs> <laughs> Typical me. I'm giving it a shout out. I don't know what the name of it is. It's That's Stallone. So I'm sure it's going to pop up. Um, okay. Oh, did, got you, did you hear Schwarzenegger on Mark Maron's podcast? No. Oh, my God. I mean, those two have to be in a movie together. Oh, I heard one thing where he said, I even thought it was silly. He oh, goes, dude, they, it was just, they were complete opposites, but they both are successful, so it was funny. So 
Mark started the interview and he just said something going like, you know, how you doing? How you doing? You know, I, I, I know you, you've been going through, you've had some, uh, you know, obstacles or something like that. And he goes, what do you mean I have obstacles? Why would you start talking about obstacles rather than my successes? And he goes, what kind of person are you? And he wasn't no. insulting him. He was trying to figure him out. And Mark goes, I'm an obstacle guy. And he's all oh, that works for you. And it was just this. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> no, dude. It was like one of my favorite comics with one of my favorite uh, movie stars of all time. Check that out. The WTF um, podcast. All right, Paul. I can't stand fucking curmudgeons. Uh, wh what about curmudgeons? What? You just combine dungeons and curmudgeons. I can't stand curmudgeons. <laughs> What? Hey, what can I say? Paulie likes an appetizer. You know what I mean? A little surf and turf. He takes this word. He sticks it with that word. You know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's you don't like so the true. fireplace, huh? You don't like the fucking piano? Hey, listen, you know what you do, Mr. Fucking Manny Rive Ramirez. What you call him? Manny Rivera. Manny Rivera. Manny Rivera. <laughs> Uncle Vinny's, you called my cousin Vinny. <laughs> Uncle, oh, yeah. Um, Last days of Dracula. All right, so I got that my was first... interview with the vampire. That was probably the one that made my wife laugh the most. Wait, what did you call it? The Last Days of Dracula. Oh, it... <laughs> but I knew it wasn't that. I just knew it was the uh, it was the Dracula movie, and the Last Days of Disco or something was out. Um. All right, I got my fourth and final. Do you know what question. movie they fucked up that should have been amazing? I want to say Mike Myers was in it. It was that Studio Fifty Four movie, and for some, I never saw it, but I remember. People that were involved in it were not happy with it. I'm like, oh, man, how, what a subject matter. How do you fuck that up? Yeah. It was a missed opportunity, Paul. I'm going to shut up now. Go ahead. Sorry. Mike Myers was a fucking so talented. Um, well, he's still alive, so I'm. No, but I know. But he's, not really, he's not really working. He's just kind of chilling in Toronto. But that guy's an animal. Hey, chilling in Toronto sounds pretty good, Paul. Dude, I having love a bunch of Having like. The Shrek series and Austin Power series, Legend of SNL, oh, and then you dude. just go chill in Toronto with your money, Paul. Oh, dude, you know they I have love beautiful it. lakes just north of that city, Paul. You have no, no idea what he's doing right now. I love a retired icon. Love. <laughs> <laughs> I love that statement. Um. All right, man. You know what? Fourth pick is tough this week. I'm seeing what I never see in Paul Verzi. I'm seeing he's I'm, questioning himself. I'm seeing confusion. I'm going to do this, dude, because I, I believe in this team right now. They're showing me something. I'm going to take the, the, the Atlanta Falcons again. I'm going to take the Atlanta Falcons again. They're dogs at the Bucks. They had a tough loss. They've been in every game they've lost. And um, then they got that absolute maniac at running back. They have the best running back that Bijan. Fuck, dude, that kid. Number is, seven. I'm going to take them on the road, getting two and a half points. Um, dude, that kid, was it Bijou? He doesn't yeah. just fake you out. You do like a face plant. No, this he's guy like put a, together this compilation of just what he's done this season. He's a combination of like with the moves and the stopping like Sanders, but then the explosive speed of LaDainian Tomlinson. He's really, I mean, listen, it's early. He's a rookie. I like that. That's he's good. a rookie, but dude, he's really good. And Baker Mayfield, I don't mean disrespect, but he's Baker Mayfield. I saw what he did up close and personal last year at MetLife. He's not that great. He's uh, won everywhere he goes and he gets no response. Oh, that, that hurts me. No, no, no. He's, he's good, but he's not, he's not over the top good. And I think that the Falcons can beat him, especially you talking about his teams or him guy fucking goes to the Browns, gets him to the playoffs, wins a playoff game. Nobody's done that in like, in like five presidents and people are like, Hey, you know, I don't fucking. No, he's not bad, but he's not, I don't think I'm not afraid of the bucks because of him is my point. Um, well, you're not you playing go. either. My fourth and final pick will be the Atlanta Falcons getting two and a half at the Buccaneers. I'm kind of scared that I have my first game tonight now. Kind of nervous. Dude, is there anything better than no. picking the Thursday night game and just getting you having a victory right, right in your shirt pocket? Like somebody stuck 100 in there. Just tipped you. Hey, Paul, have a nice weekend. You got know your what? Paul, we got your table right down front. Right down front. <laughs> I get a little daring. I get a little daring when I get 500. I got to 500. I got well, to you, 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 got, you, got, you got a lot of courage. I got a little you know? space. I got a little leeway.
You know, what, what, what are we going to do? What am I going to go 0 4? Okay, I'll climb out of that too. I did it once. I'll do it again. Well, I can't dig a fucking hole. First hole I ever dug. <laughs> Wait, you think it's the first 0 4 I've ever done? Like, That's what you do, Paul. You shoot spider and kill him every September. <laughs> then you dig the hole. All right, we um, got the, what time it is, Bill. Oh, everybody, let the Monday night special ba -boo -da -ba -boo, win some money for you. Mm -mm. Let the Monday night special win some fucking money for you. What happened last week? Did we miss it again by one cunt hair? Well, here's the deal, Bill. We got it. Uh, Christian McCaffrey has had a touchdown in 15 straight games. So I think we got to ride that fucking streak. I'm not a Jesus guy, but I'll go with the Christian. Go ahead. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey to get a touchdown is, 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 you know, it's as short thing as you looking cool in sunglasses, what you do. Okay. Uh, oh, I do. A lot of yeah. People don't say that a lot about gingers. It's all about covering up Paul, even inside. I have the window shade open. So I'm just worried some sun could get in here. The, um, uh, the Vikings are getting, oh, you already picked the Vikings. So maybe we'll stay away from the spread. I don't give a fuck, Paul. That, you that Paul, you know what that was, Paul? I was trying not to take us. I I threw that one off my back foot. <laughs> you want you want to go money line Niners back across That's... the middle? I went Brett Favre on that one in the fourth quarter. Dude, if we go money line Niners, that's some guarantee. I, I like I like you saying that, Paul. You better not be money selling line me a, a fucking timeshare here. Here we go. We go money line Niners. We go Christian McCaffrey to get one, and then. Do we do Kirk Cousins to throw one to make the odds a little better for the fans? I kind of like that because I don't think anybody thinks that's going to happen. They're going to be like, that 40 ladder. Kirk Cousins scores points, Paul. That's what hey, the man Jake. does. Hey, he crushes Jake. ass and he scores fucking points. He crushes He's ass. He's going to give him the fucking Juicy Lucy this Monday night. Right uh, up there, Jake. fucking ass. Jake, uh, Kirk Cousins. I'm going to make a funny, call. Right? I'm three minutes late, Paul. We got to wrap this yeah. up. Jake the Snake, yes. what do you got, buddy? All right. All right, there you go. There you go. That's, it's easy. Jake the Snake said, Kirk Cousins is playing. We'll get Kirk Cousins to throw a touchdown, 49ers to win on the money line, and Christian McCaffrey to get an anytime touchdown. That's I'll tell you his right now, if I, ever, if I ever had the money to buy into a pro sports team, Paul, I'm telling you right now, Jake the Snake is my guy. I got oh. him right in the front office. No, I told you, Jake the Snake is our Jonah Hill from Moneyball. He it's is. The man knows things. He has a quiet confidence. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, there you go, everybody. That's the show. Uh, you got our picks. You got my picks. You got Bill's picks. You got the Monday night special. 49ers to win the game outright. Christian McCaffrey to get an anytime touchdown. And uh, Kirk Cousins to throw a touchdown in the game. Uh, download the app. $10 minimum. We'll give you two. They'll give you $200 regardless of the outcome of your bet. Regardless. Freddie Soto. Uh, Code is a burr 200. Survivor pool is still available. So just pick a team to win. That goes to the end of the year. You'll get prizes. And this has been week uh, week preview week number seven. Let's go Jaguars tonight. Oh, by the way, the Anything Better podcast is two games above 500. Two games beat in the book. Thanks to Steady Eddie and your boy calling out of a hole. So there you go. Thank you. <laughs> what else so, you want? I'm kind of awesome. Paul Verzi, everybody. <laughs> He digs a right. hole just to crawl out of it because he loves the dramatics. We'll see you next week. Bet responsibly. Don't be a fucking asshole. There you go.